And thank you, Amadeus and Opus. Uh, we're here, guys. We're doing it. We're in it. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that one blanket, thank you so much. The B-Man 296, thank you so much. Disjunction, what is your function? Being kind to me. Uh, CJ Twin 2, the Gaming Centaur Rabbit Restorations. You guys, you've all been way too kind. Thank you for all the support yesterday as well, folks. Hi, I'm Taka, despite my better efforts so far. Uh, I have anxiety. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, oh, yeah. You don't even know about this, guys. Yeah, we're actually going to be starting with something fun because a lot of you don't know. So I've been doing commentary tracks. Uh, this is actually my third stream. Originally, uh, I was supposed to do this earlier today and decided not to uh, because there was another event going on uh, at a very p key moment. And I didn't want to stream during it. It was during Vex doing a massive charity event as it's like something really hitting uh, close to her. And congratulations to Vexoria and her whole team for setting a fucking world record. Congrats to them. Fucking awesome. I'll let them go into more detail when they talk about it, but yeah. Uh, oh my god, Darth Leviathan, 88, thank you so much. Crazed Vegas, thank you. And Gal Galloway on Fire, thank you so much, guys. So yeah, we've been doing these commentary tracks. Hype Train B-Man, thank you for 500 bits. I've uh, been doing these commentary tracks, trying to catch up with the guys, because I did season one and season two, and all the movies leading up to that. So I've had to do a kind of a watch-through and a proper commentary, because we've, we've watched all the movies, we've watched our show, and we've watched Helsing, and we've done a commentary track before. So everyone's saying it's a crime I didn't do commentary. I got to. I didn't get to do a discussion, though. And that's the truth of it. And that's what the guys are doing over at TMS. And I know they've gone another way to say in many videos that it is imperative that people understand that I was the third writer in the room. Uh, a lot of the best jokes were written by me. <laughs> I'm joking. We all did great work. But the, the joke is we all brought dif something different to the table. For example, uh... Let me give you an example. So you know that one line that Vegeta says in the third in the the Frieza saga? I am the hype. You know that part? Where he just shrieks it and you hear in his voice the like the absolute denial in his voice. Like this anger and rage. Uh yeah, that was my line. I wrote that line. And Lanny once again knocked it out of the park because I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot of the writing in the show is me setting up Lanny and Lanny knocking it out of the park. I, Timothy Paul, 88, I never direct Lanny. I don't. Lanny doesn't need to be directed. And I think he's also a beast who likes to perform on his own, and he does better. That being said, I've only ever directed him once. And he's also directed me, I think, three times. But one of the times Lanny directed me was when I sang the, I did it my way. As Sal, obviously. I vomited in my mouth at the end. Not like, Bleh, but like, I felt like, like regurgitated in my mouth. And I went... After I busted my ass for a whole day, the song sounded pretty good. I just want you to know that I am a guy who did, like, voiceover work for, like, 12 years to that point. Like, 13, 14 years at that point, And I vomited my mouth all the same. And it got pretty good. So imagine how good those professional singers are. L Tupac Momochi, thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah. It's uh, been interesting. But You know what's up, man. Oh, thank you, War Dog Leader. I appreciate that. I'm getting to something here. In a, I'm gonna get something here in a moment here because I want to talk real quick about something that's really fucking cool. Uh, so we. Uh, oh god, where was I going with this? God damn. Either way, yeah, fuck. Anyways, they're doing the commentary tracks, and I'm trying to make up for it. So I wanted to start with something here because we're in the middle of the Frieza saga. So a lot of people are aware that Little Karibo, God bless him, plays our Frieza, and he is so good as Frieza. Now, the reason why we needed to have him audition for Frieza, because originally, Lan we had an original cast that after season one, we decided to redo. Uh, essentially, because we had a set plan, and after the first season, we, ne we needed to reassess. So essentially, I was essentially I was getting a bunch of roles, which I do appreciate. <laughs> that was kind of a fluke, but I wanted more, kind of fought for Bardock, and I'm happy I get to play. If I play Bardock a third time, it's going to sound so fucking great. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, Dad, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing okay. I just prefer you just stay away from me. Just, yeah, I just don't look at me. Just turn your head. Side. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Much better. The emotional distance is part of our family. <laughs> uh, thank you for the five minutes, Dr. Metal Warrior. Oh, the My Way song was fantastic. So the reason why I was getting at this was there was a reason I don't even remember anymore, folks. I, I just, you know me, you've met me before, you know how scatterbrained I can be, a pretty ADHD, but I work with the guys, we do a lot of amazing things together, there are, a lot, I play a lot of characters in this, now the reason why we were doing this recasting was because I was getting more characters, uh, Kaiser was playing Zarbon, for example, we had Antfish who had come on, uh, right before, uh, the, uh, the, oh my god, the, the Bardock special movie, because he was cast as Dory in that. Uh, Dante Tyrannicus, thank you so much. And we had decided, because originally the cast 
for this arc was I was playing Goldo, Captain Ginyu, and Rakuma. I was playing three of the Ginyu Force initially. Now, this was a very brief period, and it wasn't that serious. But the voice I was going to play for Captain Ginyu was, Hello there, Frieza. Yes, Lord Frieza, I am more than happy to provide this quality for you. Like, I was going to pretty much do my perfect cell voice for him. And, um, see, I've been cast as imperfect cell. And I had not been cast as the other forms of Cell. So at that point, we just didn't know if I had the chops for it, acting-wise. And I don't blame the guys for seeing it that way, because we were all young, right? Lanny, out of all of us, until the third season, was the most accomplished actor. I still think he's the best, but I believe myself and Scott stepped to his level in that season. But he was always a step above us the whole time. So... We had original cast was we had a completely separate cast, so we didn't want Lanny to play Frieza because he would have a whole episode where he's talking to himself. So we decided we wanted to recast because uh, initially we wanted to recast Ginyu because I remember I mentioned I couldn't like like well, hold on if I'm playing these guys then I can't play I can't play Cell because even second form Cell would have sounded like my Raccoon because I was gonna play my Raccoon like this. Hey, what's going on there? Hey, hey what's going on there? Huh? Yeah, I was gonna play him very Cockney actually, and it was pretty much the tone I would. I did for imperfect second form cell. Pretty much the same thing, more or less. So I went, okay, so I can't play these characters then. So we had to recast. So we had a couple of people audition, and we asked little Karibo to audition. Now, we had not decided to recast Lanny yet, but we were kind of talking about it because I don't know how keen he was on playing Freeze as well. So he just kind of... He just sent us a video real quick. He edited it in an afternoon, which was him just improv a script between his version of Captain Ginyu. And we're almost on a hype train, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Thank you, Irikos. Oh, my God. Are we going to get to the next level? I have no idea. Probably not. Uh, but he did a quick scene between uh, the Captain Ginyu audition and Frieza. And we watched the video. And it was an audition for Captain Ginyu. I want you to watch this and remember that this is an audition for Captain Ginyu. And here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Never mind the hype train continues, you crazed bastards. Cinnamon bun so hot and yummy. Creamy sauce so sticky sweet on you. Yeah. You are certainly on the ball today, Captain Ginyu. If you were a dog, I'd scratch your belly. If you were a cat, I'd give you warm milk until you started to purr. But since you are neither of these things, I... What if I was a giraffe? What? Pretend I'm a giraffe. What are you going to do to me? I... I don't know. I, I suppose I would give you a nice long massage. What I... if I was a goat? A dirty, dirty goat. What would you do then? I don't know. What would you want me to do? Oh, something we'd both regret. I've hired an idiot. So that, 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 that's the real audition. That was the audition we got. And we're just like, okay, can we talk to you about your Frieza? Little Creep will use that voice in Ace Attorney. Good stuff. Oh, don't say maybe. I am the mighty Freezer from the planet Androgynous. And yes, all the horrible stories you've heard are true. I think we, this was after we talked to him about changing up the voice. If, if this is, if my memory serving me correctly, he adjusted the voice after we, I'm like, I see, I seem to enjoy my take on Freezer, so I threw it together this video. So, because Freezer wasn't as pro, he was focusing more on Ginyu in that first scene, so he created another video where he's like, okay, I'll focus on Freezer. Gave him a little bit more polish. And here's what we got. Oh, don't say maybe. And this is like an official Frieza audition. Why I really again this is really cool. Mellow Doc, thank you so much. I am the mighty Frieza from the planet Androgynous. And yes, all the horrible stories you've heard are true. Hmm, even the story about how you destroyed the Saiyan planet? Even that one. And the story about how Darth Vader killed Luke Skywalker's father? That one is also true. From a certain point of view. I hmm. heard you don't have a penis. This would make us kiss. Okay, maybe not all the horrible stories you've heard are true, but a good percentage of the horrible stories you've heard are true. Well, where is it then? What the fuck do you want me to do? Draw you a diagram? Yes. Now then, let's get right to it. We know that there were others here with you earlier, at least five. And since my men and I have much better things to do than hunt down a bunch of Namex, I wonder if you'd be so kind as to tell us where they are. I'm sorry, where are my manners? I didn't say please. <laughs> so wait, is that thing your penis? That would be a tumor. Can't keep my other nips off you, girl. And that was his like, normal audition. We're like, all right, he's playing Frieza. We're, we're casting him as Frieza immediately. Because we're just like, this is easy. This is, we can work with this. This is amazing. It was like, 
it it very much did not sound like the dub voice either. It, it sounded almost like a like a unique high, like an English version of the the Japanese actor, if that makes sense. But the Japanese actor was more like a malevolent clown. I was like, ooh, could, again, you know the actor. It's all story. This is the crazy thing about dubbing. I loved that we cast LK as Frieza because we're going to be jumping into it a little bit here, folks. Uh, one moment here. I actually got to do something here real quick, chat. I think you guys were getting that hype train up. I'm almost up to level four. You guys are being way too kind. Thank you. I just got to turn off display capture. Boom. Good, because I like I don't want to like show off what's on my desktop and stuff. So let's not do that, huh? I don't want you to see all of all, all of my AI stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I, Remy, I'll thank you so much for the 10... I shouldn't laugh. I should not laugh. Uh, but just, my God. I Trust me, I watched that drama. I've had, I'm on Twitter. I saw that. Ay, ay, ay. But let's hop over now to something uh, a less dramatic. Well, it's pretty dramatic considering what happened last time on Dragon Ball Z, a bridge. Oh, my God. Rico Hero 6... 47, my God, thank you so much, kind sir, for the 10 gifted shots. I am flattered. I am flattered. I am flattered, and I, 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 upon you, I bestow the title of Rico the Hero. That's right, I did that. No one else, me. But thank you so much for the 10 gifted shots, dude. Seriously, thank you so much. Everybody, it's very kind of you guys. Thank you so much. I pay my bills with this, folks. I really do. I, I do. We're level five hype train now. Oh, it's true. But we need to complete it. But how, how about this, man? I am honored. Ah, yeah, don't do that. Don't put me on. Yeah, I never put people on pedestal. You just want to knock them down eventually. Sanctimonious pedestal sinners. All righty. Now, I'll tell you. We'll give you a brief rundown of everything we have. B-Man, 29, uh, 296. Thanks so much for the 200 bits. And Serp the Chimkin. Serp the Chimkin. Thank you for the 1,000 bits. Oh my god, you guys. And Rogue Ninth! You see, Serp the Chicken, Chimkin. Thank you so much, Chimkin, for the 1,000 bits. And Rogue Ninth. Rogue Ninth, not nine gifted shots. No, Rogue Ninth dropping, going one step beyond. Dropping 10 gifted shots. Thank you so much. My god, ro ro Rogue, Rogue, more like Rogue Tenth. Yep, that's all about that, folks. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> um, so when we were last watching these sessions, um, the last one we did of these, I stopped at episode 18 uh, because uh, we, you know, it, it had been going on for a while. So uh, I decided to stop here. So we're going to watch through a couple episodes here. Obviously, these comics can take us multiple sessions. We're not going to get season two done here, so don't even ask for that, folks. These are kind of when I feel it, and honestly, I was almost ready to cancel today, but a lot of you were excited for this, so let's do it all the same, because I'll get into it here in a little bit here. But we're going to talk really quickly about episode 19. Uh, we ended on uh, at the end where, of course, uh, episode 18 is where the Ginyu, Force is, the Ginyu Force arrives at the end. We now drop the intro. We change it to the Ginyu Force intro entirely. It's essentially a saga within a saga by having, like, five random fucking powered, souped-up characters show up in the middle of the plot, which is, I mean, it's... It's been referenced and referenced to high holy hell, but I want you just to imagine you have this story, and there's all of a sudden five powerful dudes just show up. It's kind of hilarious, and they're just very campy. So with this, we realized that we're going to have to introduce their characters very quickly, and they were going to die very quickly, and no different than this. Um, so this episode, we realized because of how we were editing it down, we had to definitely make sure that Goldo's character got across and Ginyu's because Ginyu leaves the scene. But anyways... Anyways, let's get into this. The Greed Demon. I have plenty to talk about in this one, so let's just jump into it, folks. Non-profit fan-based parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei... And that is me doing this intro, by the way. Uh, this is this is me... Because originally for Goldo, I'll just say this before we get into it here. Uh, I play Goldo in this episode, um, I, and Dende, and Guru. I play a lot of green dudes. Um, so I, uh, I play those... Yeah, I play Green Dio. Uh, but I didn't know what to do with this voice yet. Uh, we he, he was really only there for an episode. So we kind of had to just like, we're like, all right, what are we going to do? So this voice is pretty much, um, I forget what I took from also, but I know I took from uh, Reducto, uh, which was uh, one of the voiceover performances by, I believe that was uh, Stephen Colbert on uh, Harvey Birdman. I believe he played uh, Reducto, uh, the, I think, prosecuting lawyer. I will trick you fun size. He was just very much like this all the time. I would make you fun size. <laughs> like he's always like tw twitching. Back off! 
He's like always on guard, and that's kind of what I wanted Goldo to come across like. So it's just kind of how the voice also went that way. Yeah, I will fight you. Mm-hmm. And as I did been doing Hiffo lately, the voice has changed a bunch, but in time, right? All right, so let's jump into it here. Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Here they come, boyos. It is... And introductions. Genyu. And Fish. Riku. And together we are... All righty. We're going to pick. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, guys. Keep doing this here, but I'm not going to break... Uh. My God. Okay, so that is... Raccoon is played by Gon Jingba, the actor who plays Android 17, as well as Jan Valentine. Um, Birder, the big blue guy, was played by Kaiser Neko. Uh, Jace is also played by Gon Jingba. He has, we actually cast him as Jace uh, way ahead of time because we knew he was going to be amazing. And uh, so he ended up getting Raccoon as well, which was fantastic because he crushed it. Uh, of course, Antfish, who plays Dodoria, plays Captain Ginyu. Fantastic performance. Nothing but kind things I have to say about it. I'll be ranting about that the whole time. And there's me playing Galdo at the end. <laughs> Whose idea was the Sentai opening? That was Kaiser's. Definitely Kaiser Neko's. Sure is Zabon in here. Yeah. Lord Frieza, thank you for this chance to serve you. And but some hate! Quite. I just love how that music plays, and that music is still used in some promos for wrestling to this day. Ding, ding, ding. And it's like a track that was also on, because I think there was some sound music pack that was shipped out to a bunch of corporations. A lot of music from, that was used in a promos for wrestling in the early 2000s were actually used for uh, Megas XLR and stuff. So it's kind of wild, so we just used that theme for him, too. Right. But before we get down to business, Jace? Yes, sir, Captain. Here you go, Lord Freezer. The new up-to-date Scatters. Good. And they have the ringtone I wanted. Yes, sir. Freeze, freeze, freeze. Glorious. Okay, so this reference, this was like brand new. The song had just come out like a couple months, like a month or so prior or something. Like, that's the thing. Like, this was way before, like, you know, Frieza's being like, brought back in Super. Like, that, it was way before that. But this song came out a ways back, and people loved it. Rogue Knight, thank you gifting something to Julian. And the Green Demon thing as well. Oh my god, you guys being way too kind. Thank you so much, everybody. That's for completing a hype train. 35 gifted shots, guys. And 3,500 bits. You're too kind. Too, 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 too kind. All right. Jump into it. Now, as you have been informed, Vegeta and a few mm -hmm. other pests have taken my Dragon Balls. Whoa, 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 Vegeta. Little Veggie. What's a Dragon Ball? Rikum can't believe he had it in him. I know, right? What's a Dragon Ball? Yeah. The implication being that Vegeta's like, Well, look, it's the, it's the Ginyu Force. Oh, well, look, it's the Prince of Nobody. Get out of here, bitch. Get out of here. No monkeys allowed. I don't know. I just assume the Ginyu Force were always just big leaguing them. Yes, it turns out Zarbon and Dodoria weren't enough. I've called you five here to get them back. Easy enough. Would you Seven rather them you. dead or alive? Either or. Dead it, dead it is. is. Ginyu Force, assemble! Love this. Speed of light and strength of all. The Ginyu Force shall make them fall. Lord King Cold's army's strongest force. We'll beat them all. Secure the course. If trouble meets us as we pass, we'll shove our, our fists right up their ass. Ginyu Force, move out. We're dead. We are dead. So, for those who are wondering, because some people are asking questions right now, I play Dende, uh, Guru, and Goldo in this. And Paranga when he shows up. But I did, I'm just speaking Klingon. It's not even that impressive. I'm joking. It's really impressive. Scott was really on my case about it. All dead. All gonna die. Dead men be we. A cornucopia of pain and despair is coming our way to ensure our demise. Man. We are so going to die. <laughs> Slap him. Thank you. <laughs> I, love my being whilst I love that joke. I love that. It's just a simple joke. It was a simple joke. And they slapped the wrong guy. And he's still like, no, you didn't. You slapped the right guy. Gotcha. That's subverting expectations. The puke at once when I say this. But I need your hair. Uh. I need your hair. Uh. You need our uh. help? Uh. Uh. Yes. All right, but if we're going to be a team, we need a name. No, we don't. Oh, I know. How about Team Three Star? What? Well, we're a team, mm. and there's three of us, and the Dragon Balls have stars on them. 
Team Three Star. That just makes me want to kill you even more. And you're still only the second most annoying bald person I've ever had the displeasure to work with. <laughs> Team Three Star, move out! I swear to God. Okay, so this was like a trick for writing for us when we got here. Was like, okay, now Vegeta's no longer trying to kill them. He's now their friend or their buddy, and not trying to actively murder them in this scene. He does later on, but for different reasons. So it's just, it's, just, it's so weird. It's like, all right, now this, this is one of my favorite parts of a plot is where like everyone has to unite, like all these like unified people now have to work, to, all these people who are separate now have to work together to fight someone else. Enemy of my enemy, but it's also just how much Vegeta hates Krillin and Gohan and Goku. He hates them all so fucking much because <laughs> they destroyed his illusion of himself. So he almost had everything. They fucked him and now it's all here. And it's just, he has to work with the people who screwed him. And it's just, it's like trying to convey that energy because he's just, he's getting more and more frustrated. So yeah, that's why we're going to get into it here. And let's jump into our B-Man. Thank you, Will. Shadow Fox, thank you. I, I should have said something when we were writing this scene. I don't like this. I, oh God. I, God damn it. This is, this is probably the one I regret the most. I don't even know how this happened. I have no memory of it. I don't remember this being written. I have no memory of this being written. I act, I mean, my brain purged it. Maybe my brain purged this scene. I don't know. I don't even know why it was in the actual show. Because it was. And I want you to all... I kind of want to skip it. But it's like, I don't know why this was in the actual show. I, I just... I just... I just... It's... Would you like to hear the sound effects I'm going to make throughout this scene? Hello, Earth Woman. Why is it the most replayed? You sick bastards! Spread them. Taking the Dragon Ball, bitch, me later! You yeah, look stupid. Sorry, Bulma. <laughs> I wish we had written this differently. I just wish we had. It's one of the biggest missteps, I think. Uh, and, um... I... I will say... I, mean, I don't know. We could have did it. We could have done this just so much better. Great read from Corinne. Vegeta, if you don't mind me asking, what are we in for? You ever watch Power Rangers? No. Just joke. Ninja Turtles? No. Sailor Moon? No. Beetle Bogs? No. VR Troopers? No. Samurai Cyber Squad? No. Tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills? Oh, yeah. God damn it. When that was brought up in the scripting room, I refused to believe it was real. And then I think Scott sent me the wiki, and I'm like, that, what? Yes, we made it here before the Ginyus. Come on, let's get this over with it. What the hell are mm. you two doing? Mm. We don't think we can trust you. You <laughs> still haven't pledged your allegiance to Team Three Star. What are you, dense? The Ginyu Force could be here any second, and then we're... Hi, Vegeta. Hi, Ginyu. And then we're... I, I love that. That's a... That still holds up. I still love that. Hi, Vegeta. Son of a... Beast, why the f does all this f***ing shit happen to me? Jace, please. Sorry, Captain. My scat is acting a bit shonky. A bit shonky! pig! Are you done? <sighs> yeah. Very yeah. good. Now, to cut straight to the point, I want those two Dragon Balls you have there. Oh, so that's a Dragon Ball. Supposedly- I hate that read. And that's a Dragon Ball. I think that was a redo I had to do, and it was like, I forgot the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it was like one session and I'm done. And that was it. I was like, oh, can you come back? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are seven in total if my report is correct. And the other five are... Right behind you. My God, Matt, you just cannot. <laughs> Shut up when I'm scared, I know. I once had a crush on a little Indian boy that I thought was a girl. Please kill him. Seriously, he won't be missed. <laughs> <laughs> I love this joke still. That, that is canon. I didn't know about that. Kaiser, remember, pitched it. And it was just like, kill him. He will not be missed. It's just... Krillin trying to be a friend. Just like, no. No, there's even a... I mean, there was a scene in season three. Uh, I remember it's when, like, they're fighting the androids. And they defeated Android, like, 21 or whatever. And then... And then I think Piccolo or Tien goes, do you feel like we overtrained for this? Or that like, uh, Vegeta's like, do you think we overtrained for this? <laughs> And Krillin's like, tell me about- No! Shut up! <laughs> He's never forgiven him for cutting off his tail. It's just so funny he holds grudges like that. It was 19? Oh, right, God, I fucking so many androids. They get stronger as they get lower in number, but then they don't. Alright, let's just get into it here. 
Back to that joke again. But yeah, this canon moment. Supposedly there are seven in total, if my report is correct. And the other five are... Right behind you! My god, man, you just cannot... Shut up when I'm scared, I know. I once had a crush on a little Indian boy that I thought was a girl. Please kill him. Seriously, he won't he be will missed. He will not be missed. Well, I do believe that accounts for everything. Before I take these Dragon Balls and leave my associates here to clean up, is there anything you'd like to say to me, Vegeta? As a matter of fact, there is. Look at your men. Now back to me. Uh, uh, do you remember Old Spice? Now look back at your men. Back to me. I am not your men. I'm flipping you off. Now look at the ground. Back <laughs> to me. Good. Where's the Dragon Ball? It's gone. I threw it, and there is not a damn thing you can- Here you go, boss. Thank you, Berta. It's what I do. But- but I chucked that son of a bitch as hard as I could! Oh, you can't beat my speed. I'm the fastest in the universe. That's what she said! We're all going mm. to die anyway, so... Baldy, break the ball! What the- I punch the damn thing! <laughs> ah, my hand! Hit it harder! I... Harder! <laughs> oh, Goldo, don't you think you should... Uh... Oh, oh, right, that thing I do. Stopping time, yeah. One sec. <laughs> what? I... What? This is such a weird part in the anime, because, like, in the manga, it was, he's dead really, my, like, Goldo's dead real quick. In the anime, they dragged that bad boy out, and it was not to its benefit. Where did it go? See this, Vegeta? This is for all the times you used to embarrass me. Okay, so I don't, okay, so when we were writing this next scene, I don't remember fully how the dog biscuit bit came about. I, this might be one of those moments where I just shouted it out in the chat. Uh, oh, that's what she's saying. Did you hear about this, Blank? Uh, uh, oh, this is good. Have a biscuit. I don't know why. Have a biscuit. I don't know why it came up. Uh, and it was, just, I think I pushed for it because it was just so fucking funny to me. The thought of like some, like the one member of the team trying to genuinely be nice to Vegeta. Vegeta just thinks he's a fucking animal and tries to throw him a treat. <laughs> and just have a biscuit. It's just, it fucking pisses him off. And it's, it's just a silly, random joke. Because first of all, Goldo and the anime seem to fucking hate Vegeta especially but it was like they had this one scene where they just had a conversation it's like all right let's get more personal with it so what makes me laugh my ass off is the fucking dog biscuit joke comes back twice more after this and that third one is fuck it they're all funny in my opinion but that third one it, it, it just makes me did you just throw a motherfucking dog bang, bang it explodes just the last the last time we've ever done it's like yeah perfect three for three baby Vegeta decapitates way too many characters. <laughs> it, it rhymes. Hey, Vegeta, how's it going? Oh, look, it's Goldo. You want a biscuit, boy? You want a biscuit? Do you think I'm a dog? Have a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, like, how are we going to make this work? It's just have it come at his face. It's like being thrown right from the camera. I, I, I just, I, God, I forget how this joke came about, but... Yeah. Yeah, Cupid is, is Cupid misfire. Thank you so much. And now it'll be you who rolls over and plays death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, settle down before I take. You got dog biscuits in his pocket? Yes. These Dragon Balls to Lord Frieza. It's time for everyone's favorite game. Wheel of Death. My like. See, my head cannon for all these jokes is there's like a hovering camera just slightly off screen that like blogs for them. If that's one thing we could have done differently is put in like, it seems would have been such an annoying thing to edit in constantly, but it's like for all these kind of TV jokes, it almost would have been fantastic if we had, um, you know, had this weird camera thing and sold the joke a bit better that way. So it's implied that it's there. So yeah, anyways. Now for the folks viewing at home, the rules are simple. One of my men will spin the wheel, and whoever it lands on, he kills! What the? When did you have time to set this up? And is that a camera? What kind of sadistic retard watches this crap? Love this show. Love this show. All right. First contestant. Come on, Vegeta. Come on, Vegeta. Ah! Oh, respin, respin, respin! Lucky little bastard got two of them. All right, let's give this sucker a spin. Congratulations. Congratulations! You just won a free, all-expense-paid trip to Space Australia! Oh, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Oh, uh, right. Space Oz! my own planet. Wait, hold on. You're from Australia? Okay, so we just went right in on this. Like, for whatever reason, there's this alien. He's, he's from Australia. One of the greatest 
uh, voiceover tropes from the early, uh, late, early, late eighties, early nineties, all of the nineties to the early two thousands in a million dubs. Eventually a character will show up who is Australian. Listen, the reason why is eventually they would hit their maximum saturation for voiceover. <laughs> And then they would get one of the actors. Hey, can you do an Australian accent? Sure, I'll do an Australian accent for this character. It happens in every fucking show. It happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! multiple times. It happened in... There we go. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. So this is also one of those. But also, Jace being Australia is fucking priceless to me. So we just went all in. Oh, yeah, I'm from Australia in space. It's like, yeah, 100%. There are all the other countries in space. Mm-hmm. Australia? Spice Australia. Or more specifically, Spice Brisbane. Go Spice Broncos! So, it's like Australia in spice. in spice. Gotta be careful though, Berta. Spice Dingo will eat your spice, baby. Like me sister, poor Sheila. Can we please get on with this? Oh, right. Let's have a go then. Oh, piss off, you great yep. bloomin' pinwheel. Oh, great. That means Vegeta goes to... Yes! In your face, Vegeta! Your time is... Gaunching but Soon, you will face the... I'm a wrestling fan, so I was sad I couldn't play the wrestler character. I really am. Gaunching Ba is not a big wrestling fan, and I almost love it because, God damn it, he's perfect. He's so great! He has the... Oh, yeah! Oh! Oh! He has the intensity of a wrestler immediately. He's just... Gon's just knocking out of the park, dude. It's, 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 I will admit, just Gon's just such a great performer, this arc. The end all, the be all, the please all, Rikuma. I swear, I don't Mwah. even know what's going on anymore. All right, gang, it's time for me to head off. Try not to mess up your uniforms and be back by 0500. Yes, Captain! Ciao. So, uh... I guess we're fighting the little green guy over there? Yeah, that's Goldo. Have fun with him. Any strategies? Throw dog treats at him. Oh, that help. I'll find it hilarious. Well, come on, Gohan. We're strong enough to take this guy. Just keep your guard up. Mm. That's right. Keep on your guard. Don't drop it. Not even for an instant. Ah, what a dog. What are you going on about? It? You see that? Okay, so I... Re My memory of this writing of this episode was as I was this was a challenging one to write um I feel like we were we were butting heads a fair amount in the writers room and I I made this we actually when we made this joke the biggest problem was no one's going to get this because at this time when we wrote this next to no one gave a shit about JoJo it's true not a lot of people cared for it we got JoJo we love that and it's just so <laughs> it's just kind of funny how that works out uh so yeah we you know it's true it's just fantastic that was just a taste of my power huh? oh, what the hell was that we also argued that krillin was super strong so i'm like okay if we drop a vehicle on him he's fine this dude's taking like like city shattering blasts and he's blocked it kind of Kinda. A after this arc, he starts doing that. Rare joke, they age better with time. Every joke we made is amazing and hasn't aged at all. Especially the ones that have. That was supposed to crush you. Go on. Did you see it? His power! He can- Stop time? Summon steamrollers! <laughs> you, you sure about that? Positive! Go for him! You fools! <laughs> <laughs> so we just cut a whole episode. What like with that when they're running at him to this, we just cut a whole episode. Bam, like that. Whole episode is cut. I mean that. There's a whole episode of Goldo like like setting up strategies, holding his breath and <laughs> running running around and setting up his strategies. They just they do it that way. I mean, so anyway, so we just cut it. We just gone. Bye. Goodbye. Throw it out. We don't want it. <laughs> Let's just let's get through it. Let's get to it. How many episodes of Goldo in? One. We wanted Goldo gone in the first episode. My psychic powers are unrivaled in all the galaxy. 
You stood there and mocked me. The whole world stood there and mocked me. But now you find yourselves slaves to my whim. Feel the earth fall out from under you. Your world shatter. As I am your... Why can't I feel my everything? Oh. <laughs> this is the end of the road. The end for me. I... I wonder... Will I dream? <laughs> I fucking hate you. I know. <laughs> Son of a gum-chewing funk monster! Why the fruit does all this funny stuff happen to me? Forget my life! Always surrounded by miserable, failing clods! Like this whole world just likes to bend me over and find me in the Alps! Like I'm some sort of schlock receptacle! Well, as far as I care, these miserable cows can have a fancy barbecue with a goddamn pig! The following is a non pro so yeah, uh, that was us making fun of just how they would redub lines to the point where they sound ridiculous. Find me in the Alps is 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 a, re, is, a is an abbreviated way of dubbing in a line which someone's saying "fuck me in the ass." Find me in the Alps. I wonder if Lanny did that in one take. I think he did actually. Yeah. So that's Galdo, everybody. He is gone until I wrote in another cut a random cutaway with Galdo at one point. Hey, give let's give Galdo a line. <laughs> and Bert is gay. Really? <laughs> that's the end of the bit. That's a big Lebowski reference, right? I don't fucking know. It, guy, you, well, you know, it might be a reference to something. I might have mandela it into my head. Hard to say. Okay, so this is episode 20. This what? Okay, this is, this is, this is quite an episode. It's time for the Mechamania! Now, what we decided to do before this, if memory serves me correctly, we wanted to, like, involve a lot of fans. We wanted to involve a bunch of fans. So we actually asked fans to send in recordings of them cheering and stuff. And we, of course, used the takes that actually are good. Uh, no offense to people. We're like, if the mics are bad, we're just not going to use it. Sorry. So, um, this was interesting because Kaiser at the time did not like wrestling and he still does not care. He, he respects wrestling, but it's not his thing. You know, I, I think he, he gets why we respect it. And, uh, so we had everyone come in here. We had them all record and there's a couple of really fun improvs. Like you suck diddly ak is something that someone says at some point And it's fantastic. Uh, it's just this episode's wrestling references. Uh, we only make one mistake, and uh, instead of pile driver, it, it's a power slam, and it bugs me that I should have said something a bit more in the scripting room, but I didn't want to push back because, you know, whatever. I was also in a weird place at that point. But anyways, let's jump into it, folks. Profit fan base parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Bye, Goldo. You really saved us, Vegeta. Yeah, you totally pulled our butts out of the fire there. Really? Oh, before we go, because now I'm done with Goldo, like my, my Ginyu Forest character. It was fucking cool being Goldo. I, I like doing it. It was brief, and it was done. And the fact is, and the truth is, I've done, I think, four times the amount of recording for Goldo and Hiffle. And and I and it's it's just kind of I laughed because I was looking at my script in one of the episodes I recorded for recently, and there's more Goldo dialogue than Cell dialogue in one of the episodes, and I was like, <laughs> how did this happen? How do I have more Goldo dialogue than Cell dialogue? Uh, just want to read the OG manga ball. What do you think of it? Uh, we're watching Dragon Ball Z abridged right now, uh, Doctor Metal Warrior. But yeah, I heard the manga. Uh, the manga's good. Yep, that's why they base an anime on it. Uh, Tyrant Chaos. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Buster Sword twenty six. They have hundred bits. Uh, and you appreciate the cameraman. The most powerful being in all entertainment is the cameraman. Actually, the guy who pays him. He actually has more power, I think. Um, and with the joke of Virginia rattling off old TV shows, really, it's home. I watched VR Troopers. Just to rephrase it last time, it's just feelings of how much stuff has happened in the span of a couple decades. It's true. Thank you for the 50 bits as well, guys. Now, so, guys, one thing. I know sometimes people come in here and they drop messages like, hey, you want to talk about this instead? Sorry, no, don't mean to change the subject. Um, but I want to talk about blank, and if you do that, guys, I probably will time you out because um, we're, we're we're watching Dragon Ball Z abridged, and we're talking about kind of DBZA and adjacent stuff. So just yeah, I prefer to just keep the content to that. He showed that team three star spirit. But now we're gonna get to, get to Namek Mania, so much, 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 much wrestling commentary I have. I'll never find your body. I feel a little sorry for those guys. They just lost their teammate. Mm. They must be devastated. So, when was the last time you had to, you know... Three weeks. Bloody hell, three weeks? I did it on the trip here. Raccoon didn't even I have didn't enough anything room chocolate. in his pod. Oi, 
Oh, is that jerking off over there? Is he dead? They're, they're talking off. I'm talking about jerking off right now. Ed? How tragic. Not telling the captain. One, two, three, not it. Not it. Not it. Ah, wankers. Murder was the fastest. It is a fish. So just switching up the intros was, I think, Kaiser's idea, and I like it. It really gives this part of the plot a different feeling to it, which it really did feel like in the original anime, too. I remember just being really enthralled by DBZ at this point, which is why um, them resetting the plot in the middle of this really upset me, which is why it took me a long time to get back into the show. <laughs> Thank God for streaming. Ah, yeah, yeah. So I think we got to... I, there are still our power levels here, so essentially, um, from my understanding, is like Raccoon is a little bit stronger than Vegeta at this point, but Raccoon is more or less the heavy. Like, he's got a lot of power, but he's probably not at the strongest. Do this or what? Hit Raccoon's music! Okay, one second. Sarah Venza, thank you so much, guys. Thank you all for being here. Let's just. I'm sorry, guys. Let's just. So, are we gonna do this or what? Hit Raccoon's music! Vegeta! You think that just because you're the prince of all Saiyans, you're the best there is at what you do. But let Raccoon tell you something, brother. You ain't no Wolverine. And you ain't do music, got yeah. what it takes to step up to a five-time champion. Champion of what? This fight right here is going to be a blooming slobber knocker, it is. You can just feel the intensity. Who are you talking? This is great. We, we turned uh, Jace and Murder into wrestling commentators for this. It's just something they've probably done before. And yes, that is Doom music. I don't know. That was Kaiser's choice, I'm pretty sure. And perfect. Talking to the audience. We're doing com Dude, he's not doing Macho Man or Hulk Hogan. It's, um, he's just doing, he's doing Raccoon. He's like taking the original Raccoon voice and just kind of making him a wrestler. Essentially, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Like he's just, he's being very extra. The thing is, the guy's yelling all the time in the dub, so it works perfectly. Uh, Jin Nara, thank you as well. Commentary might. You see, Vegeta, you sit there and brag about how the Saiyans are the mightiest warriors in all the universe. How they're the most ruthless. Well, look at where they are now. Dead. You talk about your legends and your warrior race and your pride, but that doesn't mean a damn thing to this man because the name's Riku. Bomb, bomb. It rhymes with doom. Dun, dun. You're gonna be hurting. Fall through. That was fun writing that. I remember. I think I wrote that promo with uh, Lanny. I, again, I, again, I, I'm trying to remember, and I feel like I, I'm just gonna like. Did I write that? I wrote that. <laughs> Wrestling's fake. <laughs> That was my line, too. That was my line. I'm like, okay, then he says wrestling's fake, and then everyone just... Oh, go to hell, all of you. And if it means getting this damn thing over with, then I'm just going to have to kill your ass. Now hit my music. Welcome to the Grand Tour. For those who do not know, that's the uh, Dragon Ball GT intro music. One of the worst things to ever come out of Western Dragon Ball. Yeah, I mean, it might be the worst thing. Next to Dragon Ball Z abridged. Hi oh Okay. Oh, beautiful. Suck it, Jabroni! Jabroni! Yeah, uh, again, you can tell myself I, I had a fair amount to say with some of this dialogue. Suck it, Jabroni! I just I wanted to hear Vegeta say Jabroni. <laughs> it's amazing. I just want to point out that when Rhea Ripley returned after you know, taking a, a, some time away after losing to Charlotte, when she first came back to the WWE, she posted on her Twitter a short video from season three of DBZA where Vegeta lands and he just goes, I'm back, bitches! And that's what she posted on Twitter. So I want you to know, everybody, that wrestling and DBZ are quite close. <laughs> Ah, yes. I have many stories I could tell. I never really got why Vegeta says, suck it, jabroni. I know, right? It's because he's saying jabroni and you can't listen. 
Don't forget, everybody. I'm trying to alienate everybody. <laughs> well, everything went better than expected. You talking more smack Vegeta? What? <laughs> just so ridiculous. Let's just take a look at this animation here again. This artwork here, folks, because it's just... <laughs> just look at him. Just look at this guy. Let's l just look at him. How could we not make him a wrestler? Like, he's making a scene of everything. This man makes an absolute fucking meal out of every fight. Can't you tell how weird this guy is? He's like, ooh, you got me now! He, he does, like, puts pirouettes into his kicks and shit, because he's just making, he's just, he's sports entertaining right now. Or <laughs> smack Vegeta. What? How could you possibly get up after a hit like that? Silly Vegeta, the only thing Raccoon sells is merchandise. Oh, I better. Bet your raccoon don't even live. That's a funny joke. <laughs> That's a funny ass joke, chat. <laughs> John Cena didn't have one of those. It was the only thing they didn't make for him. <laughs> and for those who love wrestling, the only thing I sell is merchandise. He's saying, I'm not selling the moves for you. Yeah, exactly. A body. Please, you already owe me a space soda for my last pet. <laughs> well, you still owe me a spice burger from the one before that. And where can you find all this spectacular space food? At Spacey's. Now with our new Raditz menu. Spacey's. It's good food. In space. In space. <laughs> Guys are nailing that. more makes seven. Ah, Ginyu. Okay, so remember, we started this thing by, by doing the scene where Little Karibo submitted his audition for Captain Ginyu. Uh, newbies subscribing at 100 bits. Thank you. Jin Nara, thank you. Sarah, thank you so much, guys. So the, here we are again. We're back once again to the same scene, but now it has been uh, probably about a year and a half to two years since we cast Martin. We have just, we, we, be, like, all of our voiceovers been getting better. And here is that scene again. And one more makes seven. Ah, Ginyu, I should have called you from the beginning. Thank you, sir. Now in celebration, I shall commence the Dance of Joy. Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. It is entirely necessary. Uh, no, really, you don't have to... Actually, I do. I'm contractually obligated under your father to dance the Dance of Joy post every successful mission. So one of the things we decided to do in the writer's room, and I think this was Kaiser's idea, and I loved it, was um, Kaiser, since Kaiser knew a lot more about the core lore of Dragon Ball Z than I did, I knew the, the broad strokes of the show and a lot of the characters. Uh, but he was really, like, very much aware of, like, how the actual, like, setup worked. So Kaiser's pitch was, listen, like, the Ginyu Farns aren't Frieza's men. They're, ca they're, they're King Cold's men. Frieza is technically autonomous of his dad. However, these are not his elite soldiers. These are the, the, the Cold, like, the, like, you know, King Cold's family soldiers, essentially. They are the elite force that serves Frieza's family. So it's not that it's just his personal henchmen. It's as a matter of fact, it's it's actually like the the family royal guard essentially. So he's calling in everybody, and this is what kind of causes that. And we really try to reiterate that every chance we had to really sell that, and uh, it really came across that way. Yeah, the elite bodyguards essentially. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're they're pretty much the best troopers. So that's why it says like I'm contracted. I'll be like your father. It doesn't actually work for Frieza. He works for Frieza's dad. Yeah. Father to dance the dance of joy post every successful mission. Uh, proceed. <laughs> and okay, so I I literally grabbed. I remember to like. Okay, so Scott, here's what I need you to do. I grabbed Scott um footage of two thousand like seven two thousand eight Monday Night Raw. And I'm like, oh, get the drugs, the drugs, the money, turn up to get it, to turn it out, to drown, I'm down up to, 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 to sweat, to do, to come on, get me, come on, come get it out, move to the music, yeah, monkey music, moving to the music, yeah. Yeah, so that shit. So I showed them the way, like, they would do recaps in the middle of the show, and I'm like, are they doing a picture in picture at the same time? I'm like, yeah, they're doing it that way. So Scott was like, oh my god. So Scott got some custom work done to actually create um, the effect of it being a wrestling show. Because if we were going with the idea of this was all being broadcast, it's kind of leaned on that. Even though we kind of kind of went away after this, but that's fine. It was fun while we had it here. And uh, so this is a great example of that. We're back, Mike. While you were gone, Raccoon got Vegeta up guard with his patented Raccoon knee. It was 
See, the problem with some of these fights is we can't really add a joke because it's just they're fighting. There is no room for dialogue because they're having really crisp fights and stuff like that. We didn't really have the power up and shoot blasts until later on in the series, but at this point, it was still pretty grounded enough to have a lot of martial arts fights, so there's a little break sometimes in some of these fights to actually get anything across. So the way we were able to get a lot of this fight across was having actually both halves of the fight happen in two separate cutscenes here, and that way we were able to actually get across the fight in a different way, and when we were able to get through that to the next part of the plot. Instead of like just throwing the fight away, we have it play like that in that regard. And that's, I think, it was a really effective way of doing this. Like, we had to find out different ways to inject dialogue, to, to work with pacing. Otherwise, we can't just show you a two minute fight without a joke in the middle. Because that would just be, that, just go watch Dragon Ball Z. That, that's Dragon Ball Z. You don't need to do that. Like, we're doing a comedy version, so it needs to be different. Like, this, I always mention this, but like a lot of my inspiration for why I like writing comedy are from a couple of different sources. But, um, uh, early Simpsons, Mel Brooks movies, and uh, as well, Clone High. That's kind of where I pull from. And uh, everything can be funny if you contextualize it properly. And I don't like the idea of just tossing out a fight because we can't make it funny. I mean, I feel like this is something we all agreed on. So we uh, were able to like just really work different fights in different ways, which made those fucking movies challenging. I love the movies we wrote a lot. They might be my favorite videos we've done. But that was because we had to hyper-condense uh, 50 minutes down to about 20, 21 minutes. And not only are these movies short, they're also doing a lot really quickly. And even though most of them are just retreads of arcs we just went through. And by the way, everybody, about the, about the new Clone High series that just came out, by the way, uh, the one that leaked, uh, it was confirmed by Phil Lord, who wrote it, that it's not done. And from what I'm understanding, they didn't even have all of, uh, all of Abe Lincoln's dialogue recorded, and they didn't do an editing pass yet. So that is why it's probably not as good, at least the first episode that leaked, because it's not done yet. That's what they said. It's not done yet. It's not done. It's like, yeah, it was leaked. That wasn't done. Doesn't even have all the dialogue in yet. Yeah, there you go, folks. And I'm pretty sure the guys haven't done their editing pass either, because don't forget, they fucking, they, these guys, like Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, they're all about the editing. They're all about their pacing. They're all about the meticulous, like, doing that stuff with their script. That's why all that shit is. The pacing's all over the place because that's a rough cut. They haven't done their act. They're not finished yet. They even said on Twitter they're not finished yet. So everyone giving them grief over the quality is like, dude, you watched something that was 75% done. I, so yeah. And there, were, there were moments where Abe's voice felt like it was done by a scratch voice. That's exactly what happened. That's why everyone watching it is just like, guys, it's not done yet. Ay, ay, ay. Anyways. It was absolutely devastating. And then, we cut it, and then we do that great zoom in there. Fat Kaiser just did that. I just appreciate it. Because this was, again, a 2011. So editing like this was really challenging. And Kaiser was, once again, he always gives himself grief. For, for the era, no one was better than him. Because look at this. It was absolutely devastating. And just zoom in like that. And now he's back on the offensive. But he can't seem to land a single hit. Raccoon elbow! Oh, and Raccoon follows up with a vicious Raccoon elbow. It looks like Raccoon is just too fast for Vegeta. And that's coming from the fastest... Again, this is, again, theme music that we you can hear in uh, multiple, like, in WWE uh, promos back in the early 2000s, mid, late 2000s, as well as Mega Sex LR theme. And Travis, I believe, who's in the chat right now with a little VIP check mark as part of a old, uh, old, I say old, something I was heavily involved in and is still existing to this day and is having an awesome show uh, to this day. Um this was Max's first theme, correct? His his creator wrestler came out to this exact music that Raccoon has in the background. So this shit has always been near wrestling, so I'm really happy we got to use it. Sorry, I don't know how much we talked about some of these music choices, because I know a lot of the things to talk about this, like Lanny and Kaiser covered a lot of, a lot of it, but like in particular, I feel like i got to bring up a lot about this episode. I'm not even be able to get through. Like, I feel like I have so much to say about each of these episodes, because I just like some of these were just so challenging to write in a creative way. I, I even have, oh my god, let's just keep going here. This guy in the universe. Not really relevant, butter. Yeah. <laughs> and that ends the dance of joy. Uh, thank God. Now let's wish me some immortality. Not quite yet, Lord Frieza. Lastly, I must complete the Daddy's Little Princess dance. My father would command no such thing. You are correct, Lord Frieza. Very well. It was your brother. Ah. <laughs> Okay, we were like, we knew we were going to get to Cooler. We knew we were excited. Okay, all right, the brother of Frieza. This is going to be great. Everyone's going to be like, hey, look, it's Frieza. No, I'm Cooler. <laughs> 
And just the idea of just cooler, just cooler. I feel like cooler's the kind of guy who would say, oh, I don't think you're a brat. No, you're just yourself. I hate you a lot, brother. I know. <laughs> And we're back with the font. Here's what you missed. Boy, did we time that commercial right or what? <laughs> oh! oh a beautiful team. animation. But it looks like it didn't do jack I love... Oh, here it comes. Okay, so... Okay, so this is... Okay, now a pile driver is when you... It's like when you grab... You grab the driver on the waist, you put the head between the legs, and then you, you like sit down on the guy's head. That's what a pile driver is. Not a lot of people do them because they're very dangerous. Anything to the top of the head or the neck is insanely dangerous. Now, he is not doing a pile driver here. I don't know what it is. It's it's not quite a power bomb either. I, I, I he's just he's, he's like holding him upside down away from him and like I'm like driving his head into the ground. It's it's like a power bomb is on your back. No, Batista Bomb is, is a power bomb, but you sit out with it. The Batista Bomb is where you sit with the power bomb to get that extra... Instead of just letting go and letting the momentum do it, you carry it all the way down. A pile bomb? Power driver? There's the, uh, So, power driver. All right, well, whatever, guys. We're, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Because he's like... He's like... like he's like over his head. Like he's about to spike him. It's a dom you know what? It's a modified Dominator. Thank you. Oh. See, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> what would you even call that wrestling move? I think that's called the Celtic Cross. Like, this is... <laughs> what is that? All right, is that a pile driver? All right, sure. He's going to drive his head into the ground at least. <laughs> this is going to hurt. That, that looks like that's about to really hurt. <clears throat> the dunker. He's about to get dunked. Oh, that's what's happening. The power pile. Ooh, the Dunkus. Oh my God, the Dunk. The Dunkaroos. Give him the old Dunkaroo. Oh, mate, he's giving him the old Dunkaroo. <laughs> Planning a Vegeta. <laughs> I love that sound effect. Like, bam. <laughs> Like a vegetable, yes. Mm. You'll sure see, Wilson, Vegeta. You. you don't seem to comprehend where you stand right here. Because the names break the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. He might have just taken Raccoon's bleeding head off. This would be a huge loss for sport edutainment. Edutainment? I love that. As Raccoon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a serious... Series, okay? I will not let you shit on Dragon Ball Z. Okay? I've cheeked every crack of this, and not a thing is wrong with it. So stop shitting on this, okay? You're being assholes. My God, look at his ass. I, again, I love Raku. He's like, he has the mannerisms of a wrestler. He did a kip up. He just did a kip up. In the middle of a legitimate fight, he did a kip up. Like just like, oh my god, the crowd's going crazy! Like he's and he's wearing like again, he so much is a wrestler. He just is a wrestler without him being a wrestler. I don't know if that was what Toriyama was going for him, but he so much is like a wrestler, even outside of the jokes we're making. Is Rakuma a top or a bottom? He's the side. As Rakum was saying, the name's Rakum. It rides with doom, and you're gonna be hurting. Oh, oh, two, two, two. oh yeah! He's what a pose! Look, I, I, how can you hate this man? Like the true crime is they all weren't like this, okay? They all weren't like this, and it bums me out because God damn it! If, the, the, like, the quote-unquote Ginyu Forest jokes, Raccoon is the most into the poses out of the captain. I know he's a villain, but we love him. No, Raccoon's just too great. It's he's just... so thick! He is quite juicy. You're you're definitely right, Zarenus. Uh, McLovin, thank you. Uh, Drunk Metal, thank you. <laughs> and Dr. Wilson, again, thank you, guys. He said he well, he's not a, he doesn't have a dumbed-down dub voice. He sounds like Sylvester Stallone. But that's what the dub voice is like. Oh, yeah, it's me, Sylvester Stallone. 
Who's the millhouse of DBZA? Uh, in DBZ, it's Krillin. In DBZA, it's Yamcha. Stuck with a Rakuma Rissa gun. This is vintage Rakum right here. Vintage! This could be the end. I love it. Now, I want you to watch what happened. This was really quick in the anime, too. This could be the end. Like, so he kicks him in the back of the head, so the he closes his mouth down. So all that energy beam literally <laughs> gets stopped. Uh, Color Theory Eli, I honestly thought Burner said, it's, it's convenient right there. Maybe I'm just stupidly tone deaf, as Raccoon was saying. Mm. So the beam literally is coming out his nose. So like that 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 giant laser of death essentially is now hitting all inside of him, his mouth. You're supposed to keep his mouth open and shoot it out. No, it's, it's gonna come out his eyes. It's gonna come out his like his eyes, his nasal passages, his ears a little bit, his nose, like, oh, and right up against his teeth. And it is it, it is oh it is it, it is nasty what happens to him. And, but Krillin kicks him. This is really smart strategy. So why I love the fight at this point. After the Ginyu Force, the fight's kind of... <laughs> you know. Tina! Krillin, Krillin helps out. Gohan makes a save. Big explosion. Dude, the curvature of Namek oh, on that one. second interference from Team Three Star. You idiot. I'm already one foot in the grave. You should have attacked Raccoon. Come on, Vegeta. We couldn't lose one of our most valuable Team Three Star members. You carry this stable. If there is any solace to all of this, it's that you will die along with me. Mm. Could Raccoon get a mirror? <laughs> he feels like he might have chipped a tooth. Look at him. Look at his beautiful message. Look at his beautiful. Look how beautiful they are. Look how beautiful they are. <laughs> Although the thing is, Krillin calls him Team Three Star. <laughs> oh my god, what's wrong with your face? Dear God, what happened to your face? According to the- Yes, that was a reference to Red Letter Media, as you all assumed. That was my- I believe I put that one. What's wrong with your face? <laughs> the true crime is we never got Rich Evans to play somebody who just dies. The rules in red. He's allowed to take on both of these new challenges. Sounds good to recoup. Recoup! Does every move you have start with- <laughs> Oh! Oh, by the way, oh, so in coming here, first of all, Krillin don't count. We were very strategic with it, but I'm going to say something here. The next line, and I think Lanny has said this, is one of his favorite lines of dialogue is Krillin. Uh, we uh, talk about who's best sounding like getting all beaten up and moaning. And, and I'm just like, Lanny, as this next line, as Krillin, this is one of the fucking funniest lines Krillin has delivered in this show. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> Oh, and a devastating recoup. This is pretty funny. I, I think there's funnier Krillin lines, but this is up there. Kid there. Let's see that again in slow motion. In Brought slow motion. Spice Forex. <laughs> Spice Forex. Spice Forex. Spice VB is his. Cool. Does every move you have start with. <sighs> what a rip. Oh. Hello, Gohan. Have you done your homework? Because if you don't, Chi Chi will kick. My ass. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Chi -Chi, I, I remember we were <laughs> Lanny like nailed the delivery. Me like Chi Chi will kick my ass. <laughs> Don't forget the whole arc started. He has to get his homework done by the time he gets back. And Kellen's like, Oh my god, did you do that? I don't want to die. <laughs> Start with. <sighs> Oh. I there's just a split there's a split second where the Krillin own count is also quieter. It makes me so happy, implying that it was recorded and slowed down. Hello, Gohan. Have you done your homework? Cause if you don't, Chi Chi will kick my ass. <laughs> Every time. It's just so great. It's just too great. I, I <laughs> God damn it, I love you, Krillin. I <laughs> God damn it. Oh, it's a slight voice crack makes it so funny. He's like, kick my ass. Because that, the true thing is, like, when your voice breaks, that's more realistic. Our voices break all the time. So when we get our voices to break, I think it's really funny. And this is the perfect example of that. Are you okay? Yeah, 
Seems he threw my nervous system out of whack there. Can't quite feel the pain. There it is. Ah! Uh, I play Guru, remember everybody. So here we go. Here comes some Guru. Now, our visitors from Earth require your assistance. You must go help them. You must go help them. Now, Twitch chat. More like bitch chat. Because I bitches now, now it is me, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry we never worked that into the show, guys. Now behold, it is me, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. Bitches to you. Lollipop love, thank you so much. By the way, folks, yes, I play him. I wrote the series. It's funny, guys. People come in here not knowing I actually worked on the show. It's my favorite part. It's my favorite part. It's like, you did? What? Lord Guru, that would leave you totally unguarded. No. I would have Dende. Dende. Please don't leave me alone with him. He is the third strongest of our kind. Lord okay, so my favorite thing is this is one of the only scenes where I talk to myself. See, there's a lot of scenes where, like, uh, you know, like, Kaiser will talk to himself as a bunch of characters. Lanny talks to himself all the time. Like, just Raccoon and Jace talking to each other. I almost never talk to myself in character. So this is one of the few times I ever get to do that, is the scenes with Guru and Dende like this. It's true, actually. So these scenes are always very precious to me because um, I get to play both Guru and Dende. And that always freaks people out because they sound the reverse of each other, which is, like, the, pretty much the... I can... Hold on. Let me see if I can do the end day right now. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I can do this here. <clears throat> no, it is me, Guru. And then we lower our voice a little bit higher and then go even higher with it. And then just like, okay, Nail. Nail, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't leave me with him. Nail, don't leave me with him. Please don't leave me with him. I'm worried. There we go. I don't know if you answered this already, but planning on doing a stream, but you, Dende felt like a blank slate in the beginning. Did you, you feel like giving him a bit more stank to his personality? Well, the thing is, Dende in the in the show is kind of a blank slate character. A fair amount of characters kind of, they don't really have a lot. I call, I kind of call them blank slates in a lot of ways, because they kind of, you just kind of put whatever you want on them, because they're not around for long. And Dende was one of those. We decided that, like, he just had shock PTSD and slowly came out of it, because technically he had his whole family wiped out in front of him. So I'm going to imagine it's going to take more than 72 hours for him to kind of, like, come down from that. That's right, everybody. So, anyways, let's take over here again. Lord Guru, there are only three of us left. Dende, how does it feel to be the bronze medal? Like everyone I know and love is dead. Every party needs a pooper, that's why they invited you. Party pooper, party pooper. Now, this is a true story, and I've told this story many cons. What you just heard... Let's hear that again one more time, folks, because I'm probably not going to be able to get through a lot of episodes tonight, but that's fine. You guys, look, here we go. Have Dende. Please don't leave me alone with him. He is the third strongest of our kind. Lord Guru, there are only three of us left. Dende. <laughs> only three left. How does left. it feel to be the bronze medal? Like everyone I know and love is dead. <laughs> Every party needs a pooper. a pooper. That's, that's why, why they invited you. you. Party, party pooper. pooper. Lord Guru, why are you still here? <laughs> why are you here? Like, it keeps telling him to leave. And he's still there. He's like, why are you here? <laughs> so, true story, my, whenever I would be extra, like, in a way that isn't charming, uh, <laughs> My dad would sing a song and go, Every party needs a pooper, that's why they invited you. I'm like, shut up, party pooper. You can't not smile when he's doing that. My dad would do that when I was being really bitchy as a kid. <laughs> so, I was scripting it. And I swear to God, I just started singing it. And it, um, I, it made the guys laugh. And I'm like, my dad's saying that to me. And they're just like, ah, put it on him. Let's do it. So we all agreed and we put it on the carrot too. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but only he's saying that after it's like, oh my God, 
There's only three of us left. Come on, guys. High five. Top three. They're all dead. Fine. Be a party pooper. <laughs> uh, Blue Dragon 52, thank you so much. And welcome back to the fight, ladies and gents. Last we left, we had two new contenders. Boom. We now have one. I'm not. This is brutal. So, Evan Skyheart, thank you so much uh, as well. This is br the fact that, like, a seven year old, because, like, Golan's like seven or eight years old or nine or ten or something at this point. It's ridiculous. He's clearly a 16 year old. Uh, so, he fights like this fucking alien who's not even up to the knee of. Is he six in this? Is he six, actually? Jesus Christ. Oh my god, this doesn't. He doesn't. Okay, he's 16. <laughs> he is five. That is insanity to me. It's just crazy to me. Not going to back down. I might be younger than you, smaller than you, weaker than you, and much less experienced, but I learned more about peach farming than you. I think this was a horrible decision. Rikuma agrees. <laughs> this point's turning into a regular piss kicker. Oh shit, that doesn't stand a chance. How old is he? Like five? Six, five and a half. But the real question is, what do the <laughs> fans think? You talk about who you are all the time. Recoom this, recoom that. This is great but speech. You're <laughs> nothing compared to my dad. I am the son of Son Goku. The man who will come and kick your... Brutal. Oh my God. That was incredible. Yeah! This is wrestling. This is wrestling. This is wrestling. My ass cheek clapping. Who's that? Okay, so this next bit, we're playing a copyrighted song. We might get in trouble for it. We had a particular thing. We almost didn't use this song, and I kind of regret using it. We could have come up with something else, but we cut the song exactly when the line "I am a real American" comes in, because Goku's not American. So we had the song up to that point, and we cut off the American side of it because all the lyrics could be used to ascribe to Goku until that American line. And then it's like, no, no, he's not American. <laughs> That's Superman, and which is a very similar character. My God! My God! My God! Don't say the wrong word, Hulk Hogan. You gotta take the stand and don't have to hide. If you hurt my friends, then you hurt my pride. I gotta be a man. I can't, I can't let slide. it slide. Next line, I am a oh, real man. Yeah. And that was the wrestling <laughs> episode. <laughs> oh, hold on. All done. All right, so you're done with all your dances. Yes, sir. We can wish for my immortality now? Of course. Fantastic. Now, Dragon Balls, grant my Me. wish. Make me Lord Frieza immortal. Great read from Martin. So great. And that... that. Um, I don't think it worked. But... But why not? Those village elders explicitly told me there were only seven balls and that I need merely to bring them together to grant my wish. So what the hell? Perhaps there's a password. A password? But I killed them all. There's no one left to tell me. I've lost my wish. Might I suggest the dance of cheering you up? Uh, proceed. <laughs> Good eye. Just and we did a charity event here as well. We did uh, some charity proceeds for severe flooding that happened around that time as well. Ha, proceed. It's just like, all right. It, I mean, it's better than nothing, right? Noodle Cleric, thank you so much. Uh, and Barry J, thank you as well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 sorry. The following is a non-profit fan-based parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Yes, best time. Episode 21, this is where Goku... Um, Goku uh, makes us make uh, go Goku. I have a quest. Yeah, Heavenly Father. Yes, you have a question in the back row. Yes, Heavenly. No, 
we're not putting on the Canadian who's who, the Canadian subtitles thing. Okay, so what happened was um, essentially a bunch of the fans uh, started rewriting the subtitles, which was kind of causing an issue because we had genuine people who were disabled who needed to be able to read everything, and the jokes for the Canadian subtitles were not written by us at all. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't suggest people watch with it unless you've seen the series a fuck ton. In my opinion, the the quote unquote Canadian subtitles because we moved the the the, the, like the the fan written comedy subtitles, we moved them over uh, to the Canadian thing so the actual English tracks could be the actual dialogue, and also and this is my own personal belief I believe a lot of the Canadian subtitle jokes, um, they ruin a lot of the jokes. Uh, it's just the truth of it. In my opinion, they they give away jokes, uh, some interesting ideas. Um, I, I got no real opinion because I didn't write them, and uh, I think it gives away a lot of stuff. And just pfft, it's just kind of like it's just kind of how I feel. And no joke, um, it's kind of frustrating uh, just because it, some people think we wrote them, and what bugs me about it is we didn't. And I don't I don't think the the writing in those Canadian subtitles is a reflection of how we would write comedy subtitles. So. Uh, uh, in the NTT Thunder Cookie, you can think that if you'd like. It does not add any comedy for me in a lot of a lot of reasons. It's in a lot of re I don't care for them. And truthfully, if you're ever going to watch this series, I do not suggest you watch it with the Canadian subtitles unless you've seen it like multiple times. You want to check out to see what the fans some some fan jokes, a couple things. Uh, but uh, again, I feel weird because I don't want to like poo poo and say it wasn't good enough or anything like that. It's just like some of the jokes just aren't funny that they're going for, and it's like I get what they're going for. It just doesn't work for me. And, uh, but the problem was I don't like it when people think we wrote it. That's my biggest beef. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, Did that answer your question there, Heavenly. That's right, everybody. I hate the fans. How did you know? That's the takeaway, everybody. I hate the fans and I think I'm better than all of them. Correct. There you go. Correct, guys. See, I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. That's why it's, I'm happy we moved them to Canadian stuff because people put some work into that shit. And in the end, some people find it funny. Uh, I hate Canadians. Yes, it's true. I do. I hate myself. You keep it going strong. Exactly. I said I don't care for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, you're just like Metallica. Yeah, I think I hate him. Yeah. I, I hate the fans, chat. I've turned my back on the fans. <laughs> like Canada was fake. No, no, no. That's just the concept of freedom in America. <laughs> All I'm going to say is all Americans can't insult French people anymore. It's not allowed. It's now banned, actually, guys. Sorry. Americans can't make fun of French. The French have more backbone and spines than you do, even though they retreat all the time. What? What? The, when they don't get what they want, they shut the country down. When you don't get what you want, uh, you whine. See, I'm going to be a great wrestling manager. Moving on. <laughs> Finally, I'm on planet Nemec. Ah, my fun thing here. Ah, my goodness. I feel like a jerk here, but I have to time out some people here. My goodness. <laughs> all right, Goku's here, guys. The following is a non-profit fan-based parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toy Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Yes, best time. It is. Finally, I'm on Planet Namek. <laughs> so serene. I think I hear a duck, but mm -hmm. this far out in space? That doesn't make any sense. Nope. Ah! Oh no, that sounds like Krillin. I'm a coming. <laughs> it's a very obvious joke. She's just here's like, oh my god, ah! That's a that's a duck all the way out in space. I like the idea that ducks on Earth go, ah, ah! It just like it sounds like Krillin quacking, going quack, 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 huh? Uh, a fate ball shield. Thank you so much. Talk to Sentai. Talk to Sentai. Talk to Sentai. We should have done this from the get go. <laughs> I can't believe we came all the way out here. One of, okay, by the way, this is one of my favorite fucking rants from Little Karibo in anything. Uh, because, like, the, yeah, it sounds kind of like he's being really awful to the Namekians, but he's a fucking, he's a fascist war criminal. 
who and he's trying to be funny with it. Okay, so uh, Martin goes off in this scene. One of my favorite rants from Martin, and I'm probably gonna replay it here. Let's give it a play here. <laughs> Everyone spent a week in the space boonies for nothing. Seriously, I'm surprised we didn't hear banjos on the way in because everybody's inbred and looks the fucking same. <laughs> Not to mention, I lost to Doria and Zarbon, the latter of whom spent 400 credits making long distance calls to his girlfriend, who I am convinced is named Chuck. Lord Freezer. What? <laughs> the amazing. Freezer's had it. Freezer's had it up to here. Frieza had a really quickly 48-hour in-and-out plan, and it has gone south real quick here. And the just, oh, just, oh, just, oh! <laughs> Frieza at the end of the rope, just, oh, oh! All the way out here and spent a week in the space Space boonies! Seriously, I'm surprised we didn't hear banjo music on the way because everybody's in red and looks the fucking same! Not to mention I lost to Doria and Zarbon, the latter of whom spent 400 credits making long-distance calls to his girlfriend, who I am Who I am convinced is named Chuck! Good freezer. What? There may still be a few hold-ups somewhere. Perhaps you should check your scouter. Well, would you look at that? Three in that direction. Good work in you. All in a day's work, sir. And now, the, the dance, dance of solitude. solitude. Strike, Strike a pose. So, are uh, we just waiting for this thing, or what? Holy dooly! Jesus, that was fast! He's fast as hell. I mean, that is... Not as fast as me, considering I'm the fast. So this episode, we really, uh, I know Kaiser definitely, this is, Kaiser gets a lot of credit for this episode because he really focused on the broship between, uh, Jason Berter because throughout the anime, there's about six, epi I think like four or five episodes or maybe, or three, I mean, I don't remember how many, where they're just standing side by side, just bantering back and forth. Oh yeah, Berter's the widest. He's bigger than Raccoon actually, technically. Um, not as bulky, but like wider and technically because he's more alien. So they're like, they're best friends. So we decided to really like fo focus on their friendship this episode. And it's true. And we're coming up to one of my favorite looping. You know how <laughs> it's, it's Chase being punched in the face. And here we go. Once again, a shout out to Gonching Ba who crushes it. In, uh, in the universe, uh, but compared to the average person. We get it, Mike. It's cool. Gohan. Hey, Gohan. Gohan. The crack sounds. Gohan? Maybe he'll wake up if I shake him some more. Goku, just give him a sensu! Oh, right. Eat up, Gohan. Hey! Riccoon was in the middle of a match here! So how about you? Sir, I am talking, talking to, my, to son. my son. Oh, Riccoon apologizes. Okay. Wait, what am I apologizing <laughs> for? Riccoon's gonna kill you! This is like the one time where Goku cares about Gohan because he's about to die. Sir, I am talking to my son. Dad? <laughs> Dad! Oh my god, you're here! I love you, Dad! That's right, Gohan. I am, I am here. here. Hey, Krillin! You hanging in there? Oh, I've had worse. You know, when I died. It was definitely a close second, though. Close Rikum second. will not be ignored! Sir, I am trying to talk to my friends. Hey, Vegeta, we're friends now, right? Fuck off. The best. Now have a magic beam. That's the first thing they have to say to each other. We're friends, right? Fuck off. <laughs> after the first entire season, after everything, we're friends, right? <laughs> he's not even questioning. He's, he's just like, yeah, we're friends, right? Goku is not questioning that they're friends. I mean, like, oh, you're my friend now. No. <laughs> Did I contribute most of Goku's lines? No, that was all of us. We all wrote that. We all wrote Goku in a lot of ways. I, I think Kaiser may have wrote a little bit more for Goku than everybody else. It's hard to remember. This is so much stuff. But make sure you chew it, or else you grow a beanstalk in your belly. Goku, it was terrible. We landed here, and then there were these really strong guys, and then there was even more strong guys, yeah. and then our ship blew up, and then there was even more strong guys. Lord, now, reading your mind. Wait, what? By the way, this actually happens in the act. If you've never seen Dragon Ball Z legit end to end before, Goku gets there and, like, puts his hand on Krillin's head and goes, like, ah, while I was training... I now have the power to read people's minds. So it literally, instead of having Krillin get him up to date, he puts his hand on Krillin and now knows everything. It's never used again. It's never brought up again. It's never explained. And this is really, it happens. It happens. We're just like, all right, he does it. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was a guy. 
Goku, did you just read my mind? Yeah, huh? But how could you? Muffin button. What? Huh? That's it! Rikum has had enough! Feel the strength of the Rikum! Ultra Fighting Miracle! Sir! <laughs> I will fight you in a minute. This, this is... Just, just hits him right in the, just, boom, right in the solar plexus. <clears throat> Anyways, where was I? Like, just, oh! <laughs> Dude, he just solar plexed them. You know what just happened to him, essentially? Remember that one scene in Smiling Friends? Well, this is Anthony, your, your, your entertainment demon. I swear to God, dude, if you fucking do that again, I'm gonna punch you in the stomach. I swear to God, okay? Jeremy, that's true. Oops! That's literally what happened to Raccoon. See, I warned you, dude. I warned you. That's literally what happens to Raccoon. He got solar blast. It's impossible. I will fight you in a. Ultra fighting miracle! Sir! Impossible! Kakarot was nowhere near that same level when we fought on Earth! The only way he could have attained this strength is... No, it can't be! The legend says it only happens every 1,000 years! Has he become... A Super Saiyan?! So anyway, Vegeta, what... Super Saiyan is just like, Oh yes, the, 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 the prophecy that one day, there'd be a guy! And his name was Broly! And Goku cried, like a lot, for like three hours. <laughs> what happened to you? Did you get beat up by this guy? <laughs> uh, n no, I, um, uh... You fell down some stairs. I, I fell down some stairs. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we had an You fell down some stairs. I fell down some stairs. Shit! <laughs> I, the, the implication being that Nappa's not even real. It's just a, like, it's just, it's a manifestation of, like, Vegeta's psychosis. I, um, uh... You fell down some stairs. I fell down some stairs. No, you didn't, you... Shut up before I throw you down a flight. So... Okay, so we cut a whole filler scene where, like, a bunch of Namekians show up here, because there's actually other Namekians, but we just, you know... No, they're not. Just a bunch of filler. Oh, Dende. Sucks about your family. We've gone over this. But do you... <laughs> this, is, this is all me, baby. This is all... This is all Taka. End-to-end -end Taka for this Before scene. I throw you down a flight. So, Dende. Sucks about your family. We've gone over this. But do you know who also lost his family? Mm -hmm. Batman. I don't know who that is. <laughs> See, this is why we need TV. Why? No, 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 I never left, sir. I was outside hitting my head against the wall for 20 minutes. So that's what that was. Why have you ignored my order? Because, Lord Guru, I can't leave you unguarded no matter what. Clean that up. fucking love how he wrote Guru. He's a bastard. He's a bastard. Tuh, clean that up. <laughs> it's just so awful. Because <laughs> the implication is that, like, Nail is the only one taking this seriously. Maybe Dende a little bit. Um, because they need, the, they need the Dragon Balls back to wish everybody. So they can't have Guru die, but Guru's the worst. So... <laughs> He's just, he's not the guy to be in charge right now. Audra Fenn, thank you so much. Parza1 for FA11, thank you so much. 
Ah, proceed, uh, Deloki. Thank you so much. What the bleeding hell? We were having all right rips not here, and then this piker shows up, and just like that, it's good night, Irene. We get it. You're from space, from space Australia. Australia. He's making fools out of us, Jace. You bloomin' right he is. We'd better bust out our special technique. Seizure procedure! Cohen, whatever you do, don't, don't look directly look at, at it. Cohen? <laughs> no one! <laughs> no one resists the seizure procedure! Plan B! All right, you bastard. Prepare to feel the wrath of the Ginyu... <laughs> Oh, you goddamn wanker! You punched me in the dark! Oh, you did it again! Oh, stupid! Stupid! Stop! Piss! Oh, what did the kitten tell us to do in this situation? Jace, if you ever find yourself being punched repeatedly in the face, always remember to. Oh, oh we got off the kitten! So, are you gonna. Again! 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 No why? No one resists the <coughs> seizure procedure. Plan B. All right, you bastard. Prepare to feel the wrath of the Ginyu. Oh, oh, you goddamn wanker! You punched me in the just... Oh, you did it again! I don't know how we came up with this. I just don't remember. Oh yeah, no, this is once again. This is Ganching Ba. He played Raccoon and Jace. He's so great, and I think he's one of the best actors in this arc. He just is, and this. Just, just reacting me punched in the face. It's just, god damn it! It's so funny. It's so goddamn funny. In the, oh, stupid, stupid, the piss! Oh, what did the kitten tell us to do in this situation? Jace, if you ever find yourself being punched repeatedly in the face, always remember to. Oh, oh, we got off the kitten. So, are you gonna dodge any of these? Oh, that's what the kitten. <laughs> Shut up! Stop SUPPORT! Well, you've got very nice hair, you're a beautiful shade of red, and honestly, you're the only guy I can rely on on this team. Oh my- Misfit Vondel, thank you so much. And punch him, you dumb bastard! Oh, oh but thanks, you know, that it really cheered me- Oh, God, I think he broke something that time! Yes! Stop! Logo time! Oh! I love that edit. The punching joke, it's just it's just the shot of him just like just punching him once in the face is funny. It just it's one hit. It's not like a million hits suddenly. It's just one solid punch to the face and he goes, "Oh fuck!" Oh, oh. I like physically rocked from it. Okay, let's do that again one more time cuz oh, it's the most replayed moment. Oh, something that time. Yes. Yeah. Goku time. Oh. All right, this is just bloody stupid. Calm down. We gotta come up with a plan. Listen, if you use your crusher ball on him, I can rush him the moment he tries to dodge. He may be fast, but he's not faster than the fastest guy in the universe. Okay, might. We need to talk okay. about this whole fastest oh. in the universe <laughs> thing. Yep. First off, the kitten's got a higher power level than you. Yeah, so? Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but a higher power level means he's faster, yeah? Well, okay, maybe. And Lord Freezer's got a higher power level than all of us. Okay, that's just not fair. And if you think about it, Goldo <laughs> can stop time, yeah. so that's Yeah, he can, it's true. It's... No, 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 okay, I am not slower than f***ing Goldo. Better, calm down. No, <laughs> shut up, you shut your stupid red <laughs> face. Oh, don't worry, mate. You're just low with a Goldo. I wonder I if there's a Denny's on this planet. I could really go for a Grand Slam. Like, mm. everyone has something special. I don't. See, this is that cutaway where we just cut to Goku. I could go for a Grand Slam. This is like a classic Family Guy joke where they're trying to have something serious. And, like, Peter just goes, I gotta go to work tomorrow. What am I? The big blue snake guy. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. Jeez, mate, I'm, I'm so sorry. Great. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I just, I just want to be special. Something to call my own, you know? Mate, mate, you do got something special. You mean mate. Ah, oh, dude. No, oh, no, yeah. really. Remember yeah, when I had to move me piano into me flat and Raccoon was too busy with his match and Galdo, well, he was Galdo, but you, you mm. got those ivory keys up those five flights in no time at all. Give me best might. Thanks, Jace. 
You're my best friend, too. You know, after all this is over, what do you say we head off to Space Seas and just have a good old time? Sounds good, Mutt. But remember, you still, you owe, still me owe me a space, space soda. soda. <laughs> You're right, I do. Now, let's go show that bloke what for. <laughs> Say, do you know where there's a Denny's around here? Butter! No! Butter! That'll go great on, great my, on grand my grand slam. slam. You just killed me, best mate. I, I'm gonna get to Keaton, and he's gonna beat you up, Captain! I, I'm gonna get to Captain, and he's gonna beat you up. Well, that was... I want you to remember that these guys have, like, killed lots of innocent people, by the way, okay? So don't feel bad for them, okay? Remember, remember, everybody, they are monsters. They have killed so many innocents. They have. I don't care if you like them. They, they, they have. They have killed a lot of people. They really have. Jace and Bert, they killed a lot of people. Like, they were just, they were killing people, just innocent people, just dying. Just like, all right, they're all effed up. All right, good job. We're best friends right here. We killed all these children. High fives all around. That's what they did. They're bastards. There. Why, wow, you feel sad for the, vi for the character? He's a villain, and he's killed children. You're crazy. It's fun. Now, where are the fighters? I really want to deck that freezer guy. You've got to be kidding. This is a super saiyan. A super what? Nothing, just lamenting my crushed dreams. Goku! I can't believe you're so strong! Well, I did train at a hundred times normal gravity. F <laughs> Man, no wonder you killed them so easily! Fuck. Dylan, I'm not gonna kill them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I remember specifically going like, alright, he has to like say, like, get, be really upset, and he's gotta swear, and we have him keep swearing censored off screen. I want <laughs> Papa, but thank you. I mean, just, if you hear that again, you can literally hear the sound get quieter. Fuck, you're so strong! Well, I did train at a hundred times normal gravity. Fuck! Man, no wonder you killed them so easily. Fuck. Dylan, I'm not gonna kill them. They're hardly even. Oh, the, fox, the fox's cloak, thank you so much. Alright, so this joke. Uh, remember Mass Effect? Boy, I do. Remember Mass Effect 2? Boy, I do. And that's about it. And that's all we know. Video game reference. I'm a threat. <laughs> Vegeta! That was not very Paragon. <laughs> Renegade for life. I think that's bad. Seriously, if you hit him hard enough, you can play a song. <laughs> I don't even know what that's from. I think that was Tetris. Isn't that what you get when you cut yourself with something rusty? Nope, no. that's rabies. <coughs> Actually, Dad, you can track rabies when you're bitten by an animal with a disease. Silly, Silly go, go on. Con. Animals don't eat people. People, People eat, eat animals. animals. Silly go, go on. on. <laughs> the following is a non-profit fan. That's a Simpsons reference. That's like, cause like, silly bard. <laughs> silly bard. <laughs> yeah, I, I would constantly try and like work in Homer Simpson lines for, for Goku. Or just rework something in there sometimes. Uh, this is episode 22. Uh, let's jump right into it, folks, here. Uh, that was amazing. And now we say goodbye to um, Birder. Kaiser Neko's worst voice, he hates He hates doing it. He hates playing Birder. Uh, he actually did a, he recently did a recording session for one of the more recent Hiffel episodes and went, I'm, I, God damn it, I hate playing this guy. Ah! He had to do the commentary, and he was, like, having to get loud with it. Mm-hmm. I'm telling people, uh, that's not very Paragon. That's not very Paragon. So, and we also say goodbye to uh, Raccoon, but Jace is still around here, so Ganching Bop did a great job as Raccoon, and if you guys would like to get new forest, you'll love him in Hiffle. So, yeah. Dragon Buys parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and Okira Toriyama. Please Thank support you, the Gamer. official release. Hype train! And so I tell him, I don't care who you are. Now clean, clean my, my jowls. jowls! And that was Nail's first, first day, on, day the on the job. Yes, sir, I remember I... <laughs> <laughs> it's just implying that he's having a conversation and Nail's not... No, no, he is. 
Bill Masu, they give it 100 bits. I love, I, I, again, I love this. I was there, sir. I, I know. He's like, he's like, he talks about nail in front of nail. It's like the, one of the rudest things you can do. It's because I swear to God, we should have reiterated a little bit more. This is like an ancient tradition of the Guardian and the Elder, and they just do not get along. <laughs> Look at Dende's face like, Jesus Christ, this is so awkward. Look at Dende's face, though. This is, this is awkward. I, I do not like being here. I do not want to be here. I was there. That also doesn't have anything to do with what we were talking about. What were we talking about? That ungodly power headed our way! Oh, yeah. Ah. That. You know, perhaps you should give someone else that power up? You remember the one you gave the Earthlings? You are correct. It is time for me to unlock your hidden powers. Dende. <laughs> oh, what the? <laughs> Got that one. I <laughs> mm. <laughs> sorry, I forgot about that. I forgot about that joke. <laughs> I got. I completely forgot about that one. Oh my god. Okay, let's try that again. You are correct. It is time for me to unlock your hidden powers. Ten day. Ten day. What the hell? hell? Now, uh, your power has been awakened. I noticed. Sir, I was referring to me. Now listen to me, Dende. With these powers, you garner a huge responsibility. I need you to run as fast as you can to the Earthling. Sir, he left you the moment after you gave him the power up. That slot! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more, one more, just one more time. One more, just... Powers, you garner a huge responsibility. I need you to run as fast as you can to the Earthling. Sir, he left you the moment after you gave him the power up. That slot. <laughs> <laughs> He's just out. I'm like, I'm getting away from Guru. <laughs> By the way, that, I think that's the last time Dende sees Guru. I, I, I think so, actually. Except for maybe on Earth, kind of for his brief second. The last, he's like, doesn't even say goodbye. Here is the 435 bits because I can. Thank you, the Raging Gamer. Thank you so much for the bits. Undying Usagi, thank you, Mr. Ed. Uh, until midday is all you get, good sir. Oh, do take care of yourself first and foremost before anything else, right? Do you blame him? No! Guru's awful. I would imagine almost all of the Mechians know that Guru is, like, the worst. <laughs> We're down to Captain Ginyu and Jace. Stupid guy in this stupid outfit starts beating us up and I lost me best mate and Jace! <laughs> You'll speak to me professionally and dutifully. Oh, um, sorry, kitten. Now, Jace, back from the field. Full report. Well, see, at first it was going fine, but next thing we know, Galdo, well... Oh, Lord, he's dead, isn't he? Dead he is, sir. Well, in our line Cold of work, dies, our lives it. can be compromised at any moment. This is something we must live with. Mm. On the plus side, Bird owes me 50 rabbits. Mm? About that, kitten. He's probably not gonna pie up. Really? He's usually such a good sport about that. Mm. Thing is, he's come down time, with a sudden case of death. Death. Yeah, he's oh. dead. That's... wow. That's a rather hefty loss. Yes, sir. He was a valued teammate. Strong, fast, and... And blue! Pardon, kitten? Blue! Uh, and blue? tall! And you're so red! And short! It was the perfect little yin-yang thing we had going. Not that no? short, kitten. Oh, don't go all Vegeta on me. I... I love that delivery from Gone. Not that short, kitten. I mean, not that short, kitten. <laughs> it's just so... Let's hear that. It's the cutest line read from Gone. It's so cute! We are going. Not that short, kitten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that short, kitten. I'm not that short. <laughs> I love it. Such a great read. Such a great read. Oh, don't go all Vegeta on me. Now, where are we going to find another blue recruit? Perhaps recruit knows someone. <sighs> He's dead too, isn't he? Yeah. Well, did he at least die with dignity? Define dignity, sir. Uh, well, Jace, 
I believe the next step is obvious. We, as professionals, cannot allow this act to go unabated. We have a job to finish, and we shall see it through. Yes, sir. Can you force? Away! Sure is nice to see you guys again, but I sure can't help but feel that someone's missing. Oh, yeah, Bulma. What do you think she's up to? Probably something girly. Hit it! In the ocean! So there's just a whole filler episode where, um, I think I think in the episode itself, like one of the Dragon Balls that Bulma was supposed to be watching, like rolls under the water and it sinks really low. And it's it's not just, she's not beside a small little lake. It's actually super fucking deep. So she has to go all the way to the bottom, and there's just like a giant crab. So she throws out like a little robot because she brought a bunch of robots with her. And at no point does she fight with them, but she does in a filler episode against a giant enemy crab, and that's the episode. And it's just Bulma freaking out, fighting a giant enemy crab, and all with big pearls. Yeah, and, like, the crab thinks that the, the Dragon Ball's pearl and won't let go of it. It's a, it's a whole episode. And there's also two Frieza soldiers who showed up, and they were ripped apart by the crab. Again, there's just so much weird filler. There's so much weird, wacky filler in this episode. Like, one of the biggest debates we had while we were writing this was, do we use it? Um... Like, do we use it? And it's, we, we kind of like, with fake Namek, we made the argument that, like, okay, that's funny enough. We can use that. And, like, the Orphans episode on the spaceship, that was a whole filler episode, too. But we, like, got that done in one scene. Whereas in, we were to condense, like, 20 minutes down to a minute and a half. Whereas in the, the three filler, oh, my God, Fate Ball Shield. My God, damn it. Damn it. Fate Ball Shield. Chala. Head Chala. Hey, Fate Ball Shield, I love you. There you go. You take that audio and use it. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's why we had that Killing Crabs. Yeah, good shit. Amazing uh, uh, music work. And I believe that work was done by one of the first music guys we worked with, too, which is good. Like your hair. Your like idiotic hair. banter is charming, but if you haven't noticed, what well, like your hair. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Oh, Krillin. <laughs> I love Krillin. Krillin is like, literally, Krillin does so much heavy lifting in this series. He is almost always present as a force. And he's, he's more or less, I, I call him like the ultimate journeyman because he's just always in the scene, taking fights, giving commentary, always th there, giving it the best. And the dub, uh, Sonny Strait, who plays him, chef kiss, just so great. Pretty much screwed here. What? Why? Frieza has the Dragon Balls, you dolt, which basically means we're already dead. Actually, not really. Oh? Something you know that I don't? A lot of things, actually. You have five seconds to rephrase that. Four. Three. Actually, what I meant to say was, when you make a wish on the Dragon Balls, the sky turns darker than the blackest void. Hmm? And out of the balls <laughs> rises a giant dragon. <laughs> Listen. We didn't design Mr. Popo. Mr. Popo was given to us, and we had to work with him the best we can. Oh my god, we have to a level 4 hype train? Fate Ball Shield. She, seriously, thank you so much, dude, for the goddamn 10 gifted subs. It's really cool of you, man. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you for all the follows. So you guys have all been really kind tonight. Damn. So yeah, none of that. Two, one. Hi, Vegeta. Hi, Ginyu. Uh... That's him, Kitten. That's the one who beat us up. What? Just look at his hair. He looks like he just got out of bed. For goodness sakes, Jace, he's even wearing pajamas. I swear it, sir. Ah, <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, he's wearing pajamas. <laughs> it's true. Goku's wearing pajamas. He's wearing his jammies. Not even wearing his battle, his battle speedo, like everyone wears. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I will admit, I don't think guys look that great in uh, the Saiyan armor. I think. I think. I think. Women do. Yeah, I do. There's um, uh, many uh, great cosplayer, crossplayer, if you will, um, wearing the Saiyan armor, and I've just, I've really appreciated. Um, <laughs> Saiyan armor fetish on lot. Did you all have Saiyan armor fetish? What are you talking about? Wow, hot take. What the Saiyan armor looks sexy on ladies? Yes. The idea of, like, b volleyball speedos are sexy on ladies. What the? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. 
Huh? He picked us apart one by one. That being said, the Ginyu Force is rocking them. We never stood a chance. No! So that's just not fair. Yes. <laughs> we never stood a chance. No! So that's just not. <laughs> Love it. I love that it's just, he's talking and you just cut to the fist hitting. Because it works. It works every time. <laughs> we just kept realizing. He just, he's talking, he just Goku punches him in the face. He just teleports in front of him and he punches him in the face. And we just have that as a default thing we can play. <laughs> oh, forget me here, guys. I had a bunch of spicy food. <coughs> mm. uh, Lion of Demise, thank you. I bet you were in the Chicago area. Amazing then and amazing now. Oh, that's too kind of you. Oh, my God. That's good stuff. Oh, God. I laugh every time. It just gets... Dude, I love looping jokes. One of my favorite jokes, which is why when we get to the Cooler movie, the second Cooler movie, that movie might be the most me any of the movies are. Like, we all work together. I think the Trunks movie is very much Kaiser. Uh, the, the second Cooler movie is very much me. And... I feel like Lanny's one of them too, but I think he'd be better at uh, pointing out the one where he has a fair amount here. But I say like, because we wrote all these all these movies together. We wrote all of them together. Like we all have a, we all wrote a fuck ton of the line. But like when it comes to some decisions, we decide to how to utilize things. Some of the movies we get a little more loosey goosey because it's a movie. Who gives a shit? It's non canon. So that's why the second cooler movie we hated it. Scott hated the movie. He, he's like, this is a bad fucking movie. I'm like, it's not a good movie. So who gives a shit? Like the cooler was a great character, and then they ruined him with this. So let's just all right. That's why one of the jokes is, would you like to know how this happened? And then, like, Cooler explains this elaborate process of how he had, like, the, the big giddy star, like, it's, like, spread to him, it took his power, and it's just like, what if we just simplified that? <laughs> and we have, to, we have the floating eye in space, and then this microchip hits it and goes, what the fuck? And, yeah, there we go, that's it. What else do you need? <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for the choo-choo train! 16 subs! You're all being too goddamn kind. Thank you so much, guys. And Ukura Han, thank you as well for the tier 2 sub at 47 months. Duh. Wow. Wow, the big ghetto star ain't no one's fool. Oh, damn! Jace, what have I told you? You know, I'm surprised you're here, mm. Ginyu. I thought you'd be busy polishing Frieza's boots. First off, Lord Frieza doesn't wear boots. Hey, Matt, thank Second, you. if he did, I'd have already polished them. Third, mm -hmm. he's off chasing some leftover Namekians. Wait, so Frieza's not at the ship? Correct. And you're here? That's right. And the mm. average power level of Frieza's soldiers is... 2,000. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Go on, go on. Get out of here and find Bulma. I see. I see. Vegeta and I can handle this on our own. Oh, no. I mean, I'd really hate to leave you on your own, you know. But if you say so, let's go, Gohan. Be careful, Dad. All right, Vegeta. We have to put our differences aside for now mm. and take these guys as a team. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fantastic and entertaining and all that. Mm. But first, if you don't mind me, I need to use the restroom. Oh, okay. About 100 miles away. He has a very nervous bladder. <laughs> I love the freezer just plows through the terrain. Don't care. Don't care. On a mission, everybody. And guys, that was just my background. That wasn't anything spoiler. I just... I just... I, I just threw a random backgrounds on. I just grabbed a random image to throw on the behind there in case something gets seen. So, yeah, nice try. <laughs> Wrong! All right. So, for the first century, I'll go easy on them, lure them into a false sense of security, and then when they think I'm not so bad, bam! I'll go full tyrant on them in the second century. After mm. that, I'll disappear for a millennia and make Good. them wonder if I ever existed to begin with. Yeah. Just Good to call. come back and kill them all. Mm. Good afternoon. It's morning. Talk. <laughs> okay, so Fraser legit just lets Dende fly past him. He doesn't give a shit. Dude, this is so funny that Frieza does not do anything, even in the even in the actual show itself. Why is that? Because he doesn't give a shit. Frieza thinks that that Namekians are like insects to him. He literally could not fucking care less. What, what a kid, Namekian? Who gives a shit? Does Frieza actually understand that? He literally barely thinks of Namekians as cre like like anything beyond animals. I'm not kidding. Don't forget, Frieza very much thinks he's like literally a species above everything. So, I'm just saying a good day to you. It's just him trying to be, trying to just be like lighthearted almost and just like, huh. 
Only time he's ever spared a child. And it just, by the way, Dan Day called him a douchebag in his language. I ever existed to begin with, just to come back and kill them all. Good afternoon. It's morning. Attack. It's always Shoot morning. Kid. Seems familiar. Shoot, kid! What do you- I love the bubble car sound effect the Kaiser chose. I forget where it's from. I forget where the bubble car effect is from. The Jetsons? Thank you. It's from the Jetsons? I love that Kaiser used it from the Jetsons because it's just like- Because originally, I think the plan was like Kaiser was going to do this. Like- Kaiser was just going to blow bubbles nonstop. But then we had to recast bubbles. Hiya! Okay, moving on. Let's just keep going, guys. And- Oh boy, this is, this is, this is, this is, we, it's just about to get spicy. Want. Ah, good sir. I suppose you could say I'm looking for technical support. Now, do we have a visitor? Yes, sir. Now, take his coat. I don't have a coat. He doesn't have a coat, sir. And I believe this is the man who basically killed our entire race. Now, don't take his coat. Listen, I have standards. If you do, <laughs> I, well, I, just, I just if you hear, I I I go over this here, guys. Let me just go over this again, cause just I want you to hear the delivery I have for Guru here, cause I, I fucking loved it. Aunt. Ah, good sir. I suppose you could say I'm looking for technical support. No, no. we have a visitor. Yes, sir. No. Take his coat. I don't have a coat. He doesn't have a coat, sir. And I believe this is the man who basically killed our entire race. You hear my voice? He's like, take his coat. And, be like, and then you hear, this is where Guru's tone is different. When he's like, this guy who killed everybody. Now, don't take his coat. You see, I... <laughs> so simple. It's just so, it's just, it's, it's, it, you can even see him going like, ooh, yeah, fuck this guy, right? Like, don't take his coat. Like, that's like the, the limit of how Guru will be like. A, a <laughs> Recently acquired what you people refer to as dragon balls, but I'm having trouble getting them to do what I want. Did you try working the shaft? Classy. Now, what does he want? He's asking how to use the dragon balls. Did you tell him to work, work the, the shaft? shaft? Yes, Lord Guru. Good work now. now. I have the distinct imp Good work now. <laughs> Tell him to work the shaft now. <laughs> it's good work there now. <laughs> Some good work there now. Impression, you're going to be difficult. Well, sir, if you're having a problem with our customer support, you can call 1 800 eat a dick. We don't even have those. Okay, mm. this is getting ridiculous. What is that? <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. I think we had, okay, so I think we did a bunch of different versions of this. One of my pitches, I remember, was I was like, I was like pitching that I should sound like Mike Stiglossa, like back old school Red Letter Media, like number five, five, everything in this movie is terrible. Remember the old Planket reviews? <laughs> I'm glad you guys love this scene so much. It means a lot to me. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. What is that? Oh, God. Natural, Natural light. Good. Hey, bisexual Viking, uh, you know what the difference between you and me is? I have a microphone and I can say you're a jabroni. Lord, I was led to believe your species survived entirely on water. How is he so fat? Oh, hello. I'm Super Kami Guru, Guru, and I'm the guy who's not judging you on your appearance. <laughs> Fuck you, Guru. You're so full of shit. You're so full of it. Well, my name is Frieza, ruler of most of the known galaxy. I'm here to offer you a deal. You give me the information I require, and I'll let the sporting young man live. Please. Please. Nail isn't afraid of you. <laughs> he is the strongest <laughs> of our race. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Hey, GG Fures, please stop doing that. All right, so this is what's great about this. Uh, here we go. Here we go. All right, here we go. 
Yeah, he's not afraid of you. Oh, really? Ah, uh, sir? Yeah, Nail's gonna destroy your sorry ass. They wouldn't be able to air it on the news because <laughs> it'll be so brutal. Sir, seriously? Hush, Nail. I'm speaking for you. Well then, if this is the only course of action available to me, I accept. I'll dispatch of this worm, and then I'll be back for you, slug. Leave my brother out of this. Sir. FYI, I don't even know if the Lord Slug movie was out yet. <laughs> His power is overwhelming. I can also sense it's only a fraction of what he's capable of. Now, listen to me. You are Namek's number one son, a prodigy child. You have been trained in the ancient ways. I believe in you. You mean that, Lord Guru? Yes, Nail. Now show him the staggering spirit of Namek and waste his smug ass. Yes, sir! Follow me! Fool. If I had trained him in the in new, new way, way, he might have stood a chance. I don't... Okay, so, in this scene, in the actual dub, he says, please, Nail is trained in the old way. We don't... We're never told what the old way is. We don't know what it is. And so he just goes, Fool, if I taught him the new way, he would have stood a chance. <laughs> he literally just sent Nail to go die. Uh, Carthy Loon. He's been trying to kill Nail this whole time. <laughs> he low-key... Wants a new guard because he doesn't like that nail. He doesn't like that nail has no sense of humor or something. It's really uh, <laughs> just one more time from Guru. It's one more because he's only got like one more scene left after this. Fool! If I had trained him in the new, the way, new way, he might have stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> You have an interesting form and a surprisingly well held technique. And you're purple! Well said. I'm sufficiently impressed. You've held your own very well. But your form and grace will never compare to that of the illustrious Captain, Captain Ginyu! You mean like this? Oh god! Is that what I look like? Jace, that isn't what I look like, is it? No, Captain, you look amazing! No offense, but this is boring. Like, Really boring. Mm -hmm. Like, listening to Gohan's piano recital boring. That does I sound boring. I realize these poses in an effort to invigorate my men and raise morale. How dare you mock them! Well... Oh, Antfish is so great, because this is the same actor who plays Dodoria. Goes on to play uh, Salsa and just so many characters in, in so many different things. Oh, I mean, it's just... I'm not even using half my power right now. Ha! Uh, quite a substantial bluff. But a bluff and nothing more. I've witnessed your abilities firsthand, and I assure you that you're. No! A hundred and eighty thousand. Huh. Oh, Keaton, isn't your max power level only one hundred and? <laughs> yeah, one hundred and twenty thousand. That's what oh. I thought. Oh boy. Is he gonna be okay? Hey, the Keaton? Yeah, he just does that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back. How you going, Kit? So, to what, from what Laura said, Captain Ginyu is technically actually a much more interesting character than the show ever tells you. Uh, so, like, Captain Ginyu actually, like, because this is, this is not his original body, by the way. So, clearly, he took this body from somebody else. So, Captain Ginyu theoretically has had bodies for hundreds of years, and he just keeps switching it out. How do you think? Well, Kitten, if you're getting stressed, you could always, you know. Oh, jeez. This is hardly the time or the place. Besides... I did it in the pod on the way here. Uh, I meant switch bodies, sir. Ah, yes, of course. Hold my scouter. Hey, what are you it's doing? It's been a while. <laughs> um, sir, you're supposed to do that to me. Oh, but you see, I did do it to you. I don't understand. No! Even his body he's using now was, was not his original body. <laughs> Oh, wow. What happened? Everything seems... weird. Oh, hey, there's another me over there. I wonder if... Ah! Oh, my chest! What in the... Oh! Oh. 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 Fable! 
We're back! How are you doing? I bought a giant crab! They make a special shampoo for that, I hear. Ow! Okay, so, uh, one of my favorite things that we do in this scene, um, is, like, we, we actually... Okay, so the voices, I stayed with the body. So, one of my... When we got to this part in the script, I think... I don't remember when we decided this, but this was not a big conversation. So, one of the big things for us was one of our biggest beefs in... Ooh. Oh my god, oopsie daisy. One of my one of our biggest beefs the is, following is, is essentially we dislike it in a lot of shows where someone switches bodies and all of a sudden they have um they essentially have the same voice. It's like no voices you have different vocal cords. Your voice is gonna sound like the original voice. It's still you're breathing out their lungs, you're gonna sound like them. So when we did this, we realized that whoever got cast as Kathy Ginyu had to be Goku for an episode as well. And one of the reasons why I say Antfish is impossibly talented is because I believe Antfish was only like 19 or 20 years old when he recorded this. Antfish, uh, if you have not followed, he's in Paw Patrol. He does professional like commercials now. Like he is so he's doing so well in voiceover because he's always been phenomenally talented. And so for this, um, this next episode, he plays Goku essentially. So he's now done playing Captain Ginyu, for more or less. He's he's done playing it like this. Now he's going to be playing it a lot more. And now he's going to be playing Ginyu like Goku. Like, haha, this is weird. <laughs> Let's see how actors do other takes on someone else's character. And I will say this. Masako playing Captain Ginyu is... It's so great. Chase, what is going on? Like, he's, he's playing a version of Goku. He'll never play. It, this is like a one-off. Uh, one off of like literally he gets to act like the same voice as a completely different character this is like the only time he gets to do that in the show so this was such a fun episode for us because again all other even in the all the dubs they switch the voices our version we're like no 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 no, we don't have to do that we can actually have it so the other actor is playing the character because that would make more sense and one of our favorite body swap shows did that as well and that is i believe it is justice league unlimited and that's where the flash and lex luther switch bodies if I'm remembering correctly. I think it's just them. He's like, now I will be able to... Now I will be able to see who the Flash really is. Takes off the mask, looks in the mirror. I have no idea who this is. <laughs> ten out of ten! I have no idea who this is! It's just so funny. It's amazing. It's so, it's so great. It's so great because it's... Uh, <laughs> Because it's essentially uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, for those who do not know Michael Rosenbaum, big podcaster, great actor. He played in Justice League Unlimited. He plays The Flash. But in Smallville, he plays Lex Luthor, live action. So what he did was essentially he played The Flash like his Lex Luthor in Smallville. And it's, one, it's such a fantastic gift because he's acting like Clancy Brown. And Clancy Brown is trying to act like a young guy. And it's, oh, it's just good shit. It's just, it's just great shit. Uh, talk, I didn't know you were a TFS VA. VFS VA, wrong. I actually co-wrote the whole series. <laughs> All righty. Oh, yeah. Nonprofit fan base parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT are all owned by Funimation, Toy Animation, Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. Okay. What happened? I'm all purple and horny. Chi Chi's gonna hate this. What's mine is yours, and yours is mine, as they say. I I I I I get. I love Masako as Ginyu, mm, or Ginyu as Masako. Sorry, Ginyu as Goku. Jesus, or Goku as Ginyu. There we go. We got it. Goku as Ginyu. Give me back my body. I'm sorry. You can't have your body anymore. It's, it's mine, mine now. now. Jace, shall we? Right, Kenton. Goodbye. Enjoy bleeding to death. I won't. Man, I'm a jerk now. I'm a jerk now. What I love about this is you can tell that that's not Goku. You can tell that that's Ginyu and Goku's body. You can tell that is Goku and Ginyu's body from just the performance immediately. It's just so great. Radar says we're getting close. Mm. Yeah, who'd have thought Bulma would have been so compliant? Why? Why would you leave me alone? Your head's so I big! I don't know this place. Did you know there are giant crabs down there? I do. I killed 
on. Okay, Bulma, let's just calm down. Why are you upset? Why? Because I am always alone. Okay, Bulma, if we were to stay here, what would that accomplish? Just take the fucking radar. Thank you, Bulma. Say thank you, Gohan. Thank you, Bulma. No problem, Gohan. And no problem. Shove it. I'll take it. Let's go! I feel bad for how Bulma was written in the Namek saga because she gets there and gets placed to the side immediately. And that's 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 crappy for the character because Bulma's actually a lot of fun and I felt like she could have been way more actively involved in this plot with more of her machines like flying around. What I had wished was I wish they utilized Bulma and like doing some running around instead of Krillin. I, I really do actually. And uh, I, I just wish the show gave us that. It didn't give it to us. And you know, you gotta work with what you're given. And it, it sucks. She's better than a taxi driver. I just wish, like, she had all of her capsule devices and she was using that and using, like, and she has, like, a mech fighter and stuff. I wish she did something like that. You know what I mean? And then Bulma somehow beats, like, two minions or something. I don't know. I just would have preferred that. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I know he doesn't do non combatants. I, I know. It's just, it's one of those things where it's just Bulma's a lot of, Bulma's, like, just, she gets way, she's so much better in the third saga, but it's just frustrating how limited she is in this arc. Even though she's on Namek, you know? Yeah. Well, if you ask me, all she needs is a little bit of wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Still fun. That edit. Can we look at that? I want you to look at that edit again real quick here because it's going to anger Kaiser. Well, if you ask me, all she needs is a little bit of wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Still. <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> Lanny, goddammit. It's just so great. You <laughs> shit the arm. I'll take it. Let's go! The arm gets- you ask me, all she needs is a little bit of wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Still- <laughs> I love- I love a little, little nudge, nudge. Nudge, nudge! Because it's like an edit where Scott actually had the arm go and do the nudge thing. It's just great mirror flip. Perfect mirror flips in, in sync with the audio. It's really, really, really great stuff. Five. Right. It's called the Wilhelm scream. Okay, this is Lanny's joke. They, I, listen, I take credit for my jokes. Most of the jokes were written by all of us in some collaborative effort, but there are key jokes that we remember writing. This is Lanny's. I, I, rem this is Lanny's. This is all Lanny's. Man, it's like the one in Star Wars where the stormtrooper falls. Oh, yeah, I love that scream. Uh, doesn't it sound like, <laughs> nah, dude, it's more like, no, that wasn't it either. Ah, that was totally it! Ah. Okay, so we're really proud of that. That's a really good joke. I am really proud. I'm just happy we made that joke because that it, we, the Wilhelm scream is in everything, and we wanted to make a joke about that. And Lanny came up with the perfect joke. It's so great. One more time, guys. Again, this is Lanny's magnum opus joke. It's just so good. The one in Star Wars where the stormtrooper falls. Oh, yeah, I love that love scream. That. Uh, doesn't it sound like... <laughs> nah, dude, it's more like... <laughs> nah, that wasn't it either. <laughs> that was totally it! <laughs> dude, that was totally it! The fact that he's, like, all in. How's the body, sir? Fantastic. A little too pink and hairy in odd places, but I'll grow into it. So, what's the plan, kitten? Well, first off, we have to touch on Freezer's balls. Uh, sir... Yes, yes, realized the moment I said it. Alright, get your act together. Hundred times gravity. That's for pussies. The only reason he took those jokers out was because I loosened them up for him. I like how Vegeta's like, I'm gonna go wash my face for a little bit. Like a jar of space pickles. Ugly, stupid space pickles. I just gotta get those Dragon Balls. And if it's anything like that jockstrap incident, then you probably buried them somewhere around here. Hey, Gohan! I think they're buried somewhere around here! Well, at least I'll have something to put back in the hole. Dig like there's no tomorrow! He, he is just like, no matter what, no matter when, I will kill the bald one. Okay, the second they summon the dragon, I'll swoop in and break the bald one's neck. Totally gonna yell Team Three Star when I do it too. Oh, I can see it now. <laughs> Team Three Star! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna yell Team Three Star when I kill him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
just he's just imagining just like how happy Vegeta is at the thought of killing Krillin finally. Oh, he hates him. He hates Krillin so. Don't forget, Krillin and Gohan's fuckery led to Vegeta not getting his immortality, and he temporarily put a truce on. But he's ready to do it. He's ready to kill Krillin now. <laughs> Let me <laughs> and break the ball. Go tomorrow. Okay, the second they summon the dragon, I'll swoop in and break the bald one's neck. Totally gonna yell Team Three Star when I do it, too. Oh, I can see it now. Team Three Star! <laughs> amazing. We found them. <laughs> ah, amazing. Vegeta's faces are just absolutely priceless. Oh, Blood Aspen, thank you so much for saying. This is the best bridge series you guys have made. Right up there, right with Hels uh, Helsing Ultimate. Well, we made three, so I, I would hope. <laughs> thank you, though. Krillin, we really did it! Finally! Now let's hurry up and wish back Piccolo, Tian Jin Han, and Chao Tzu! Absolutely. What about Yamcha? What about Yamcha? Yamcha. I don't know what this Yamcha, Yamcha is, is, but it sounds just like Raditz. I shall cuck it! I don't know what this Yamcha is, but the cucking shall begin soon. <laughs> Eternal Dragon! Rise up and grant our wish! <sighs> It's not working. Is that what you're supposed to say? Honestly, that's always been pretty vague. Usually just gather them together and then out pops the magic dragon. Maybe there's something special about Namekian Dragon Balls. Huh. Maybe if I sing to it. I know a song that gets done everybody's Done everybody's nerves! I was, I was thinking something else. Maybe the only way to summon it is to call mm. it in its native language. Uh, I don't yeah. speak German. And the only person I know who does was the toilet. And it's oh. dead. God, God rest, rest his, his seat. His seat. Ugh, what? Oh, you can't be serious. Huh? Hey, Krillin, I feel two power levels coming this way. You don't think my dad failed, do you? No way, Gohan, your dad's the best. But on the off chance, hide yourself! Mm. See, this is why Krillin's a smart guy. Oi, Keaton, someone's dug up the balls. Well then, someone's in for the beating of their life. Hey, Goku, check it out. We dug up the Dragon Balls. How you doing? Did you win that fight against that Ginyu guy? Why is that Space New Zealand guy here? Ah, uh, what the What's fuck? up with the scouter? <laughs> Do you happen to know anybody who speaks German? <laughs> ah! Ow! Ah! And what was that about? Colin, that's uh, not uh, my dad! Gohan, of course it's your dad. Goku, what's your favorite food? Waldorf salad. See, double baconator, oh shit. You see, I've acquired the body of your former associate. Goku, was it? And with that, I've gamed his power level of 180,000. That's... that's horrible! Quite. I'm sure you understand now the situation you're in. That is identity theft! We're gonna sue the crap out of you! You can't sue me if I kill you. No, then you'll get put on trial for murder. Ha! Checkmate! <laughs> huh? Uh, I wanna, uh, just look at, I want you to look at this animation real quick here, guys. <laughs> I, not every moment in this show is great, guys. And this is one of those moments where I don't know why they're all sideways. I don't know why they're sideways. I don't know why they're punching in one spot, but hey. Yeah, Moscow is an amazing actor and voice and actor and voice actor. Oh yeah, he's playing a great Ginyu right now. Huh? Uh, Kitten, you're here. The devil are you? Oh. Well, look what the space cat regurgitated. Hey, Gohan. Hey, Krillin. Hey, Goku. D Dad? <laughs> I'm surprised you're still kicking. How's that wound treating you? This is easily the second worst hole I've ever had in my chest. It's gonna take, like... A million mommy kisses to make it better. Go <laughs> See, what's great is I can just hear Goku saying that. It's gonna take like a million mommy kisses to make better. <laughs> it's just hearing that come out again, you voice is just so priceless. It's just, let's hear that again, because I love the mommy kisses. Dad? I'm surprised you're still kicking. How's that wound treating you? This is easily the second worst hole I've ever had in my chest. It's gonna take like a million mommy kisses to make it better. Gohan, we may have a chance now, but you'll have to give it your all. Remember, he may look like your dad, but you can absolutely not hold back. Ha 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 ha
What the blazes is going on? Haha, <laughs> you don't know any of my techniques. What techniques? Tell me. I'm not gonna tell you how to use the Kaioken. Kaio what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez, huh? if you're not too busy standing there like a slack-jawed idiot, I could use your help. Wait, if... I can't... God, it's just so fun hearing Masako be a bad guy in Goku's voice. If I'm Ginyu now, does that mean you have to listen to me? No. Oh. Well then, what about him? Good day, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so, we've been flying for about 20 minutes now. Got any family? <laughs> because if so, I probably killed them. Really? Nothing to that? You're no fun. Hey Jace, I've killed every single one of Freezer's flunkies I've got up against so far. Six in total. How would you like to be number seven? Peace off, you bloody monkey! Thank you, sir. May I have another? What the hell happened to you? You were not this strong when you fought Raccoon! Looks like you have some required oh, reading to do. Ah, yes, the handy-dandy Saiyan notebook, everybody. If you notice that the screen disappears every now and then, because every now and then when I move my uh, mouse too low, it'll all of a sudden pop out everything. I don't know why. I don't have anything secret that I'm playing behind, guys. Okay, it's just a, it's just a background image on that screen. All right, let's see here. Kai, okay, full moon, lose your tile, stronger every time you... Oh. Well, I'm right f***ed, aren't I? Right in the down under. <laughs> Clever girl. No! Jace! All of my men. I'm the only one left. Please, all of you, just... Just allow me a customary moment of silence. There he comes, baby! Let us... <laughs> the best part about this? I get to kill both Ginyu and Kakarot at the same time! Wait, who's Kakarot? You're Kakarot! I thought his name was Goku. His name is Goku! No, it's Kakarot! Kakarot! So he just said Goku! Yeah, I did! I know what he said, buddy! <laughs> so what is it? Kakarot or Goku? It's, it's Kakarot. Kakarot! No, no, no! <laughs> just... Look, his Saiyan name is Kakarot, but he changed it when he landed on Earth as a baby. So they kept calling him by his Earth name, and I am calling him by his real name! So does that make me Ginyu? <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfect. Change. Go. No. No. I'll save you, Goku. <laughs> I'll save you, Goku. What just happened? I don't know. Yay! I'm me again. Wait, Goku. What is your favorite? Food. Favorite? He's him again! This is ridiculous! But at least I'm not trapped in some useless body. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> so I'm confused. Ginyu took my dad's body. A minute. <laughs> so I'm confused. Ginyu not trapped one more time. in some useless body. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. So I'm so Ryrix, confused. thank you. Ginyu took my dad's body, but then he tried to take Vegeta's body. Mm. And now he's back in his own body. My dad's back in his own body. Benjamin, thank you. And Vegeta's still a prick. Yeah. Now mm. to switch your body to a cross. Ah, crap! Kind of walked into this one. He literally did. Oh. <laughs> Ribbit. Ribbit. Kurok. The hell just happened? A frog got on my hand. It was gross. So I threw it. So then, is it <laughs> Thanks, over? Thanks, Goku. Are they all gone now? They will be in a second. Vegeta, no! He can't hurt anyone anymore. Stop! Oh, all right, fine. See? You really can be a nice guy. Psychate for eight. Oh! <laughs> God! Oh, I know. How about a good old-fashioned joke? How many Namekians does it take to screw in a light bulb? The whole race. One to screw in the light bulb and the rest to die. 
and then the other one dies too. Stop ignoring me. The following is... Okay, so, uh... So, we actually had a big debate um, when we were writing that one. I will admit I lost this debate. I've won many, but I've lost that one. I did not want to kill off Ginyu. I wanted to keep Ginyu alive because of the filler where I mentioned earlier that I didn't like the Gulma. Bulma, Gulma. Bulma didn't have much to do, but there's a whole filler arc where, like, she put, she builds a machine so, so, like, this frog that saves her in a filler episode can talk. So she puts this little machine on Captain Ginyu, and then he goes, Cage now! And then all of a sudden... Switches bodies with Bulma, and then Bulma's stuck in a frog's body. And then Captain Ginyu's like, Oh, yes! We should definitely! Uh, um. I wanted to keep the, the Ginyu-Bulma filler because it was generally the one filler part of the plot I liked. Just because I thought writing-wise, that would be funny as heck. Uh, just to try and have Ginyu play it off. But everyone has not been around Bulma, so they don't really know how Bulma can be. Like, Piccolo's never hung out with Bulma, really. Vegeta's never hung out with Bulma. Like, the only two we can really notice. So, yeah. That's definitely what, we're, what we were thinking about doing. So, I wanted to keep that filler, but, eh, we decided to cut it. And, there you go. There you go. Except in the Crump Taya there for a second. Yes, because I did play Crump Taya. Yugi, we should make out. <laughs> I think we're going to watch one more episode, guys, okay? I, I feel like it's at two hours and 30 minutes. We just wrapped up the, the, the Saiyan saga. But we have a lot of you guys here right now. But uh, talking about this, I mean, it was great having uh, the Ginyu Forest. They were just such a fun group of characters. And then they were like, you know, they're gone. They, we, for this one, it felt like with, with Zarbon and with Adoria, we kind of had to get their characters across and they die. Zarbon lasted a little bit longer, but the Ginyu Forest was a lot of one episode and then <coughs> cut. One episode, <coughs> cut. So next time I sit down and do a recording session like this, everybody, I am going to be finishing off season two. But before that, before that, do you like penguins? Penguins, 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 Watch a little bit of this now. I, I, I'm wondering if I want to watch this next episode or not because I'm, get, I'm getting tired. So, uh, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is for you, chat. Because you guys have been nice with the bits and the subs. You guys have been all kind. So let's do one more. Uno Moss, chat. Last one, okay? It's a non-profit fan base parody. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT. Ball GT. Hey, Rosette Bloodthorn VT, thank you so much for the raid. We're all owned by Funimation, Toei Animation, Fuji TV, and... Uh <laughs> Akira Toriyama. Please support the official release. That's right, everybody. It's me, the voice actor of Super Kami. I passed out again. <laughs> Well, we had to keep doing the reading, the legal notes. This is a fan based parody, guys. Okay, support the official release. It, if anyone claims to say otherwise, we have it posted in front of each fucking video for a reason, because that is, like, support the official release. Okay? This is a gag dub. This is like a couple of nerds trying to make a Mel Brooks version of Dragon Ball Z, and that's totally what we did. And also, I'm so fucking honored and flattered to be able to work on that with everybody. It's just, I look back upon working on this with just so many happy memories. Uh, can it be so? Thank you so much. Just realized you have recoil. Thank you. And call me with a Wally. Wally. The reason wrap up, you are going to review the Bardock movie since there's a callback joke. Freeza! In the season wrap up, are you going to do the, the, the review, the Bardock, the second Bardock movie? I don't know, man. That one's a piece of shit. <laughs> I already did that technical one of the episodes, but I'll do it again, probably. This scene is awesome. Uh, this is uh, Ben playing Nail, and of course, Martin playing Little Karibo here. Uh, thank you so much. Corey Lily, funny thing, you're always supporting the official release. You guys are official release. Hey, yo, thank you. This is my people's sacred battleground. So, like, this is real. This is like a sacred battleground. It's just, we flew over an hour for this? It looks exactly the same as everywhere else in this godforsaken rock. <laughs> racist well <laughs> maybe so but i can't quite be a racist against a race that doesn't exist like the claw fours. dirty money grabbing claw fours. <laughs> tried to claw me right out of my money <laughs> blew those little <laughs> bastards up is what i did <laughs> oh i'm sorry i didn't know we were starting 
Here, allow me. Just the strength of that. He just casually grabs the arm and just pushes and rips it off. Like, this really showcased how strong Frieza actually is. Smith, filthy colorful. He's just, Frieza is so racist that we just made up races for him to be super racist against. <laughs> Looks like someone's going to be missing this. No, not really. Mm -hmm. Love it! Ooh, that looks like it hurts a lot. Are you okay? I'm fine! Good to know. Yoink! <laughs> Yoink! Good to know. Yoink! <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> this is where we can play with the sadisticness of Frieza, because Frieza has not actually played with someone yet, you know? Frieza's been hands-off this whole time. Do not forget, the only person Frieza has technically killed was his own minion. Everyone else has been his minions killing everybody at his request. Like, I think so, unless Frieza shot one of the kids in the first village. I don't think he did. But up to this point, I don't think Frieza's killed anybody on this planet yet. Yeah, Frieza has not killed anybody yet. So technically, he's been so hands-off this whole time. He is actually... In the manga, he does... Ah, well, here's... Only in the manga. In the anime, Dodoria does the kill instead of Frieza. So, in the anime, he's never done this. So this is technically his first fight, uh, where he's actually doing anything. So this is, this is like, yoink! He's playing with it. It's, it's like, ah, good. I haven't done this in a while. Ooh. <laughs> he only killed a Frieza soldier. That's the only person he killed, to my knowledge. So, yeah. So This is one of my favorite episodes, too. Just because we don't have any fighting to do. We just have a scene with Frieza and another character. And we have just all the heroes. Mm, it's just really good. What exactly is this? It's a healing tank. This will bring the idiot back to full strength. Goku is once again in a healing pod of some kind. He is either in transit or injured. So often in this goddamn show, it is aggravating. It's so frustrating. It just is with Goku. He's just such a fucking frustrating kid. Everyone else does shit. And he's just like, he shows up because, oh, I'm out. <laughs> Superman syndrome. This is worse than Superman. Like, Superman just gets punched away in a fight and then he comes back at the end because he's a big plot hole in a character, but I don't know. I, 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 this just keeps me going. <laughs> the bubbles tickle. <laughs> Ow, it hurts to laugh. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. It'll take a while, Ow. Though. This is the only other Ow. model the ship has, and it's kind of an old one. What happened to the newer model? Blew it the f*** up. What, did it have an opinion? Eat me. Now both of you, strip. Um. I've got body on. Okay. So let's, do what I, let's hear that line of dialogue again real quick. Blew it the f*** up. What? Did it have an opinion? Eat me. Now both of you. Strip. Uh, did it have an opinion? Eat me. Now both of you. Strip. Um, I've got body armor for you. Less awkward. I... One of my favorite parts is that... Is that, like, I think Gohan and Krillin get in Saiyan armor now. It's neat. I love that they're wearing Saiyan armor for this. I and ironically, if this episode released today, that strip would go viral instantly. Oh, I I know. <laughs> you know, Gohan, it just occurred to me. Yeah, Krillin? We're still on Namek. I think we had been making Namek for three years at this point when we wrote this joke, I think. And we realized we had at least another, or two and a half at least, and we realized we had another year, year and a half left. Just because we didn't, yeah, it's, it, it, it just, there's just a lot to come still. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it feels like we've been here for, like, a year. But we've mm. only been here for six days. I know, right? Hey, by the way, don't I look like that one guy that Vegeta landed with back on Earth? What was his name again? Hey, Vegeta, what was that one guy's name? Vegeta? 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 Chat? 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 Vegeta? 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 
Vegeta? Vegeta? Vegeta? Vegeta? Oh, damn it, Nappa. All right. Good old God damn it, Nappa. Really, we should probably focus on finding a way to use the Dragon Balls. Well, there's no. Good old God damn it, Nappa. <laughs> oh yes, God damn it, Nappa. How could I forget him? I wish Krillin was like, where is God damn it Nappa nowadays anyway? Like, he believes that his first name is God damn it. Always little green, but... But what? That's a really long flight. Krillin. Plus, I think I sense some hostility. Krillin. Fine, fine, I'll go get him. Enjoy your company. Try not to get yourself killed. God forbid you make me happy. You know, you seem like you're in a bad mood. Maybe you should take a nap. Maybe you should... Uh, actually, that sounds good. You keep guard out here. Make sure not to go too far. I like my meat shields within bullet blocking distance. I didn't think bullets could hurt you. Shut up, I'm sleepy. <laughs> Ow. Why don't you have a nap? Why don't you actually it's a good point. I probably should have a nap, actually. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Goku! Goku, are you there? Oh hey, King Kai. I've been up for like multiple part. days, yeah. I noticed. I wasn't paying attention. What the hell? Well, when I got down here, I ran into some really weird guys. One was really big and muscly, but he went down real easy. Then these two guys double teamed me. One of them took it really hard in the back, but the other didn't seem that interested. So he went and brought this really horny guy. Oh my. Who's that, King Kai? It's towards the K. Somehow we made this into a three way. Oh my. my. Oh, three way call. Call! God. Here comes one of my favorite edits in the show. <laughs> it's so simple. You don't. You don't. You don't need to add a lot. You don't need to add a lot, chat. You just. We just needed to have an arm pile <laughs> because the implication it just keeps ripping off the arm. It goes for a fight arm rip off constantly. <laughs> How many arms do you think we're up to? I think we're up to 24. Ah! Ooh. Tell me, have you ever heard of the planet Vegeta? Uh, no. Funny. Because I expect to hear the same from the next person when I ask them about Namek. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, Martin's so evil! I remember writing this line of dialogue with Kaiser, and we were like, Oh man, this is evil. Like, this is like, do you, you, you ever heard of Planet Vegeta? No, <laughs> they'll be saying the same about Namek when I ask the same question. <laughs> that is just like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, I love it. I, I just, I, uh, Martin nailed that line. I remember, like, some of these villain lines, I, I loved writing with the guys. I specifically remember writing that line with Kaiser. Uh, is just straight up evil shit. And Martin, of course, his delivery completely sells it better than the line itself. Like, this is one of those instances where what we wrote is pretty good, but Martin's delivery makes it better. And she just does. Just Sonata, thank you as well. Corey, thank you for 100 bits. Again, guys. All right, let's keep going here. One more time. One more time. Guys. How many arms do you think we're up to? Because like, while this is funny, it is kind of fucked up if you think about it. He's, like, he's ripping this guy's arms off, giving all these massive hits and going like, this does nothing to me. I think we're up to 24. Ah! Tell me, uh. have you ever heard of the planet Vegeta? Uh, no. Funny, because I expect to hear the same from the next person when I ask them about Namek. <laughs> See, like, it, it's a funny line, but it's also just terrifying because of how Martin's delivering it. Just like, yeah, there's such a certainty with what he's saying. And then just a, a, temp, a teleport back punch like that. He's just that quick. No, oh, was that your nose? That was, your, that was nose. your nose. I've had a worse time, you know. It's not often I dirty my own hands with this sort of grunt work. There's always a certain amount of satisfaction I get out of doing it myself. And that's the truth of it. Like, in the end, like, Frieza, again, I mentioned, Frieza had not been doing any of his own dirty work. This is the first time he actually did this. Now, he could have just killed this guy real quick and then gotten everything he needed, you know? But no, he took the bait. And they baited him successfully, and he's now playing, essentially. Nail is stalling him, and he knows that in the actual anime. And Martin's Frieza is just, oh, this is, and this scene, we just play it with how much fun he's having to play. But in the end, this happens to Frieza because Frieza gets too distracted. He's just having fun being a sadistic guy, slowly taking apart a person and making him hurt because 
he's got a lot of frustration right now, but he gets baited that way. And it's really like how we sold that with this. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nail starts laughing too. Here we go. <laughs> ah, it is kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at something else, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Earthlings have the password. What? Remember the little Namekian you passed on the way to Gurus? On his way to the humans with the password. By now he's probably already there and they're about to summon the dragon. <laughs> yeah, if I had to guess your biggest mistake, it would be not stopping him. That or the purple lipstick. I will f***ing murder you! Whatever. Now, I, I, I look back at this moment and I realize how what a special thing it is. Because, like, back when Abridging first started out, there was a bunch of Abridged series. There was, there was Yu Gi Oh! Abridged, there was Naruto Abridged, you know, Lanny's Yu Gi Oh! Hakusho Abridged, and another series, Berserk Abridged by Ben. So, we were always in our own separate worlds and we all got to come together to work on this project. And this moment, it is literally the creator of Yu Gi Oh! Abridged in, like, probably one of his best voice voices that he can do, talking to uh, the creator of Berserk Abridged, doing one of the best voices he can do in a show where everyone's audio is better on an even bigger stand. And it's just such a cool, like, moment in a bridging. It, it just, it was, for back then, it was, like, was so many different people. We literally took everybody we could and had them all work on this project, which is why the movies, we involved so many people uh, we could, because uh, there's just not a lot of characters in DBC. Uh, there are, but it's just, you know, with the amount of people we wanted to work with, we didn't have enough secondaries. So it's why, like, I look back at some of these scenes, and I'm just like, man, it's so cool that we all came together to work on this, and we all just sound better. We did. We, just, we all came together and made something great. We really did. Why aren't the if I had to guess your biggest mistake, it would be not stopping him. That or the purple lipstick. I will f***ing murder you! Whatever. Whatever. Why Cash aren't race. the Ginyus showing up? Oh, they're dead. Why are the dead? Ginyus dead?! <laughs> Right. Now again, Frieza's a guy who always like he has he remember he had his his two henchmen like Z Zarbon and Dory around them constantly. So they have been doing tasks for Frieza this whole time, uh, constantly doing Frieza's bidding. Constantly when it gets really bad, the Ginyu show up. They're all gone now. Frieza is alone, and Frieza is like like the, the Frieza is like, ah! like he has not had a situation fall apart like this ever possibly. Never quite like this, which is why what comes next is great. They're Namekian scum! Ah! <laughs> they dead! There we go. Stop right there, Namekian scum! Ah! <laughs> you should see the look on your face! Oh, I'm just kidding, it's me, Krillin! Ah! <laughs> You're killing me, little green. Now, come on, we gotta go summon the dragon. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Dad, they don't like Krillin. Doesn't like him. Does not like Krillin. He's like, nah, not a fan of him. Not a fan of Krillin. <laughs> Krillin, like, literally traumatized a little. You really improved your Dende voice talking. Thank you. My Dende voice got better. I realized it wasn't good enough, so I had to step it out. So that's why. Oh, yeah, people don't realize I voice Little Green. How did you know? I play Little Green. That's right. My name is Dende. My name is Dende. It's not so bad. I mean, sure, I've seen more people die than most people my age. Or really, most people in general. Then again, I don't really know anyone my own age. My best friends are a 26-year-old dwarf and a giant green alien who constantly hits me. Still, better than my dad. At least they're around. Huh, where did that come from? Mm. Huh? That sounds like Krillin. Wow, you made it in no time at all. Yeah, little Green here was on his way back from Gurus. He said he can help us summon the dragon. Great, I'll go get Vegeta and... No, 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 see? No, That's she... the best part. Yeah. You're not gonna tell Vegeta. That sounds oh. like a very dangerous idea that could very easily backfire. Well, we can either take the wishes for ourselves or give them to Vegeta. And I... I will say this. If you like Gohan's writing, that's Kaiser. A lot of the writing for Gohan came down to Kaiser, uh, I feel like. Again, it was all of us, but like I feel like Kaiser had almost a little bit more in the writing uh, for them. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Krillin was all of us, and, and Vegeta as well was all of us. I don't think he's dedicated to Team 3 Star at all. You know, I've been meaning to tell you, that name mm. really doesn't sound very good. Well, why didn't you tell me sooner? I thought it was stupid from the beginning, but nobody said anything! Let's just go summon the dragon and go home. Yeah, fine, whatever. <sighs> First immortality, then, then the bitches. The bitches. <laughs> For example, that one's mine too, I'm pretty sure. First immortality, then the bitches. 
Trust me, I wrote a lot of lines with bitch in it. Bitches love cannons. Bitch, I hate people. First immortality, then the bitches. Bitch, 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 bitch. Da da da, yeah da da. We did it again. For real this time, though. Now we just can have Little Green summon the dragon, and we'll finally have our wish. Hey, is that Frieza? No. I think that's Frieza. No, it's not. Yeah, that's definitely Frieza. He's coming. Summon it! 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 Okay, so that's. That summon it, summon it, summon it reference is obviously a reference to future uh, Futurama. Fix it, 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 fix it. Summon it, summon it, summon it, summon it, summon it, summon it. No. I think that's Frieza. No, it's not. Sensing him. Definitely Frieza. Okay, so this is Klingon, by the way. So Kaiser actually translated all of the dialogue into Klingon and then gave it to me and then was like not saying it right. I'm like, you don't speak Klingon, Scott. I'll do another take, though. Damn it, stop speaking gibberish and some of the... But while we were at it, I got to play this motherfucker right here. I play Paranga, this big beefy dragon. That's me, everybody. <laughs> As Lanny's the eternal dragon, I'm Paranga, the gem dragon. <laughs> Holy crap, you're. Look at my tits. Dragons on steroids. Also, it is implied that the that that maybe 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 he might have told Guru to kill all the albino Namekians. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We can finally get our wish! The dragon says he'll give you three. Wait a minute, we get three wishes? That's mm. awesome! I want a three point Stop thing! Screen. Okay, so this is an interesting plot point. Now, we, uh, writing-wise, the behavior and the decision-making of everybody in this scene is really weird. <laughs> and it's almost like you gotta, like, make fun of the fact that they're doing a bunch of stuff that normally other people wouldn't do. It's like, hey, let's, let's, let's waste two wishes on one thing. It's just a very weird thing. They get extra wishes, and then they don't even know what to do with it, almost. It's why this is funny. Okay, let's move on. Sorry. Hang around and wish these idiots off my planet. Holy crap, I can hear a voice in my head. Is it telling you my name is Dende? Hush, little green. The voice speaks to me. It, it speaks? I wish these guys back to life before I kill myself. Wait, can gods kill themselves? I'm about to try. No, but they can be killed. All right, little green. Use our first wish to bring our friends back to life. Paranga can only bring back one person at a time. Okay, they have very specific rules. Oh. King Kai, he says it can only bring one person back in I heard him! Which means one of us gets left behind. Now, by the way, everybody, Rakum and, and Jace are played by Tien's actor. Mm -hmm. Just wish me back. I guess we should ask Yamcha what he thinks. <gasps> no one cares what Yamcha thinks. Listen, if you wish me back, then that wish is Kami back. This is the first time we had Piccolo talk in, like, a year. No joke, Lenny did not play Piccolo for like a year. It was kind of weird. <laughs> then you can use those Dragon Balls to wish these morons back. Which leaves us with two more wishes! See, this is a brilliant play. It's like, you wish back Piccolo, that means Kami comes back. So you get another grouping of Dragon Balls. So you get two sets of Dragon Balls at this point. We are stacking wishes! <laughs> Let's wish him dynamic! Wait, what? Wait, what? Little Green, wish our friend Piccolo back to life, and then with our next wish, bring him to Namek! Hold on. This is what they do in the show, but it's just so dumb. Wait, what? Hold on a minute, don't do that. That is a terrible idea. <laughs> they do it! I don't know why they do it! It's just a bad idea to waste blow two wishes. Okay, so Piccolo's thing is they need m meat or they're going to lose the weight. They're all going to die from Frieza. So the belief is that Piccolo's strong enough 
to like make the thing so they can get another set of Dragon Balls going on Earth to wish back people dying on there. So essentially, what they're doing in this moment, the best way of describing it is, you know when you're like playing a video game and a bunch of you get like all like, you know, knocked down, but you can be rezzed, you know what I mean? So it's like they're trading reses. Like, listen, we got to get these going here for when they kill us here so then they can wish us back there because then we're going to have to do it there. <laughs> it's more or less what they're doing. They're trading reses, essentially. So, one more time. But it's a terrible idea. Back to life, and then with our next wish, bring him to Namek. Hold on a minute. Don't do that. That is a terrible idea. <laughs> The cheap smoke effect makes it funny. Just poof, poof. <laughs> ah! Just frustration. He is on Namek. Wait, where is he? On Namek. On Namek. Why didn't it bring him here? You must be specific. Oh, so it's a sort of monkey's paw. You have to be careful with the hubris in your wish. He's so. Yes. <laughs> I have to pee! I have to pee. I'm like that right after this stream, guys. <laughs> Jesus, I hope. Why is that funny? I don't know. It's just who came I have to pee. I don't remember. I don't remember who came up with that one in the room. It was just whoever pitched it, we all started laughing and went down the script. That happens sometimes. I slept. It's already night. For the first time since I got here. On a planet with three suns. Oh, you motherfucker! Oh, so, what? I love that joke. Oh, you motherfucker! And then it gets quiet, and then Gringo, oh, my ears! Because he's like trying to listen that direction. I love it. Oh, this cutaway is just so fun. I just one more time here. This is just great. Suns. Oh, you motherfucker! So, what do we do with the third wish? <laughs> I love that joke. I love that we wrote that joke. I love jokes in the distance with different audio levels, and if you balance them properly, it really feels like it's actually happening. But it's still muffled because you're not going to hear it full on, like they're right next to you. Why Does Namek have three sons? Yeah, it does. It was mentioned early in the series. Well, if nobody else has any ideas, I want my three foot high. What's up, guys? I'm never gonna. Okay, so this is one of the best performances of Vegeta. There we go. What do you do with the third wish? Well, if nobody else has any ideas, I want my three foot high. What's up, guys? I'm never gonna get my hoagie. So what do you Hi! What's up, guys? <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? Nothing much. What are my plans? What are your plans? Are, are you? you? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Kill you. <laughs> <laughs> a callback to the previous episode. What do you do with my plans? My plans? Are you? No. Good. That'd be very dumb. Why? Because I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I, I'm gonna keep repeating this part, guys, because I, I genuinely love this part. It, it makes me laugh every time. Third wish. Well, if nobody else has any ideas, I want my three foot high. What's up, guys? I'm never. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Like it's just so great. You can, Lanny's so good. In this scene, because he's playing Krillin too. Don't forget. I'm gonna get my hoagie. So what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? doing much? What are my plans? What are your plans? Uh -oh. Are you? Yes. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Okay. But first, yeah. you are going to give me my wish for immortality, or I will snap his neck. Wait, he's the only one who can ask the dragon to grant wishes, and I've got nothing to lose. Whatever. Good answer. Yeah. Now get to wishing. Okay, so the catchphrase is whatever. <laughs> A lot of <laughs> A lot of the back kids, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, that cute little dende. I fear. Okay. Okay. So. If you recontextualize anything, it could be funny. You know? But this is. He. Okay. So in the dub, in the actual show, Guru dies of sadness. In our version. Now get to wishing. I feel that they have finally summoned the dragon. You can hear how much better. Like, when I started as Guru, to where I am now as Guru here in the show, 
I got so much better as a performer. I was still behind Lanny because Lanny and Gunching Ba and Little Karibo, I feel like we're just eclipsing myself, uh, Kaiser and Masako and you know everybody else at times because they're just so great. And I don't feel like we all got a Nyx level as a performer until season three. There's actually, when we get to it uh, one day, uh, it is the episode where uh, it is Krillin, Trunks, Perfect Cell, and Vegeta. And what makes us so, that episode is so, and Android 16 technically, and what makes us very happy is Krillin is very much all three of us. Like, I, I feel like there's certain things with each character, because I know I wrote for almost all of Lanny's characters all the fucking time, but Krillin really feels like a healthy balance of all three of us, you know? And so we had our combined character, and then Vegeta being Lanny's boy. Trunks being Kaiser's boy. And Perfect Cell, finally perfect. I realized we were all in our best characters. We just were. We just were all in our best characters in the episode where they all fight. Which is where where, uh, I, where Cell goes, Go ahead, Vegeta! Flip that coin. <laughs> but anyways, let's continue on with the episode. Would be a real... Whatever. Good answer! Uh, yeah. get One more time. Here we go. I feel that they have finally summoned the dragon. Would be a real, real dick, dick move to die right now. <laughs> the reference was I was doing uh, I was doing the death sound from uh, Red vs. Blue. <laughs> the, the infamous death sound effect from Red vs. Blue back in the day. Uh, I'm going to thank everybody for the subs and everything in the bits here, too. And that's it for me as Perunga. He died of sadness. Is, is that normal? No, it's dead. And that means Guru is too. I'm so sorry for your loss. Someone has to be. That does. <laughs> I just love that all the mechans are just like, fuck that dude, man. He was the worst. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Don't you understand? If it didn't grant here come. By the way, this ne this next line from Frieza is the hardest line he's ever. No, 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 no. I want you to think. This next fight we're having with Frieza, I'm gonna gush over Little Karibo the whole time. I just am. I'm just gonna jerk off LK's voiceover this whole time. But this next line, this next line, we wrote this line and thought that's pretty evil. Martin came in and delivered this next line, and it might be the most intimidating villain line I have ever fucking heard. Play it, baby. Grant me my wish, then I'm not immortal, and Frieza's going to. <laughs> going to. Oh, no. Don't mind me. By all means, give me some ideas. Ah, oh, chills, chills, chills. I get, I literally get goosebumps. I, I get goosebumps. Chat, I get goosebumps. I wrote that line and I get goosebumps, chat. I sat there with Lanny and Kaiser. We're like, what does he say? And we wrote that line. And I, to this day, I get chills from his delivery. I get chills from that delivery. Let's hear that again one more time, guys. Because it is, I'm even going to open the next stream on it. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no. Don't mind me. By all means, give me some ideas. If there was any doubt... Hold on. <laughs> Fan friggin' tastic We're back. And we did the voice change! And now this is where we finally made the decision. We had one of our performers had to leave uh, due to multitudes of reasons, but we were able to recast his characters. We are now proud to say that one of the wonderful cast members who have joined our cast, we had several cast members join us. We had the wonderful Falero. You may have heard him as the pretty one from the Lord Slug movie. He plays Yamcha in the full series and remix weekly tube show. Boom chica! That's right, everybody. He plays not only Kami, he plays Walter... Of course, in Helsing Ultimate Abridged. Very good, sir. Our Abridged series, he plays the wonderful Walter. And not only that, in Season 3, he plays Android 16. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. He actually plays a multitude of villains. I believe he plays one of the villains in the first uh, Garlic Jr. movie. Hey, y'all, you know, everyone be slower. I'm slower than y'all, man. <laughs> 
Uh, Ant Fish was like, oh yeah, we'll give him an Aether sandwich. It's just uh, Ant Fish was doing like a Roger impression. I was doing this voice. You see that man? He can rock that shit. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Oh my god, I can't believe what's happening here. Ah. I play one of the bad guys in that one too. But he also plays, and this is the big one, everybody. This is the guy who plays Broly. He plays Broly for us. Now, we had a bunch of people lined up to possibly play Broly, but a lot of them did not pan out. And I will say this, and I'll say it again. One of the people we were actually talking to passed away, and this was a long time ago. He never got, we actually linked him to it, and he never got back to me, unfortunately. But one of the guys from Whitest Kids You Know who passed away. Uh, do you remember the Whitest Kids You Know guy who passed away uh, recently, like last year? Uh, he died. Um, now, I actually, Trevor Moore, I actually met, he actually followed me on Twitter at one point, and... Uh, I think he had seen some of our stuff and was like, I don't know. I don't know if he was, he wasn't like fanboying over anything. He was just like, I have seen that. So we were like, all right, we want to get a big cameo uh, for the Broly movie. So I was trying to ask him like two years. Like, I think we were actually, uh, we were just starting the sell saga when I was approaching him because we knew Broly was a big deal. But if you can get a big cameo ahead of time, let's do some time there. So honestly, we were going to ask uh, Trevor Moore if he wanted to come on and play uh if you wanted to play Broly. And all I'm going to say is Remix crushed it as Broly. I don't know if Trevor know. I don't know if Trevor Moore could have done that, actually. I just don't know. But he did great. But sorry, one second. Back here again. Oh, you're back. Hi, Tommy. Mr. Popo, what are you watering? Pot. Pots of what? Pot. I'm not getting rid of it. Are you kidding? That shit's great for my glaucoma. Legalize it! Legalize it! The following is a non pro Okay. No. okay. The following no. is a non -pro no! Okay, there we go. There we go, guys. <laughs> hey, guys! Thanks for coming to my stream! That was three hours, guys. That was three hours. And we ended it on the perfect fucking cliffhanger. Because next time we do this, oh, we are going to be doing uh, the rest of the saga. We're going to be wrapping up the entire saga uh, next time I do this here. Uh, I want to thank you all so much here. I want to thank uh, Technomancer. I want to thank Color Theory Eli as well. My God, you guys. I want to thank uh, Just Sonata. I want to call me Wally. Thank you so much as well, you guys. And Corey thank you guys all for the fall. I noticed a lot of you are following right now. Um, uh, oh, my God. Uh, Fate Ball Shield with five gifted subs. Thank you so much, dude. That's very kind of you. It, it really is very kind of you guys. We're going to have to raid in some people here, but I'm glad that you like this commentary, guys. And Fate Ball Shield, I mean, can we give a shout-out to Fate Ball Shield in the chat here, guys? Could we do that? I really would appreciate that if we could do that. It would mean the world to me. And uh, the overkill guy, I think about 100 bits. Da da Dr. Cat Spa is for you as well. One second here. Oh my God, I need to actually grab something here while I turn this off here. One second. Thank you. Oh, I got that. Not that. Not that. I'm going to play something else here for TFS while we're waiting. Because there's actually a couple of videos we can watch here while we're wait waiting for this scene to go down here. Because there's actually a couple of videos we've never watched together, chat. And we're going to do that here in a second. I got to scroll down a lot. Got to scroll down a lot. A lot. There's just a lot I gotta scroll through, guys. There's just a lot! There's a lot! There's just a lot I gotta scroll through here, guys, okay? I actually wanted to show you something, because you know how I played Imperfect Cell, guys? Uh, let me just take a moment here. Because for those who do not know, I play a multitude of characters, but this is one of the characters I play, and he's my, it might be my favorite thing. Hold on, let me just pit pause on this. There we go, click. Hit pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you've met me, guys. Uh, Basie, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for that level two hype train. Let's just watch this because you see this snippet here because we're not going to get season three for a while. But who was it? Wait, seriously, shut up. What is that? I have been practicing this for six years. Okay, six years, guys. Mr. bring me a dream. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Give him two lips like roses and clover. Then tell him that his lonesome nights are over. Hello, friend. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> Let's answer your question with another question. Yeah? And what's that? Wanna see me drink this guy? <laughs> yeah! Oh yeah. 
Okay, so Cell, Imperfect Cell. I want you to know, guys, that was one of those horrifying things I ever saw as a kid. Imperfect Cell is essentially a fucking slasher character. That's who he is. He's a slasher character. In the middle of an arc, from the future comes a fucking slasher character. Oh, good lord, it's everywhere. Ah. So, Piccolo, what brings you to my neighborhood? I sensed a disturbance. Well, I am pretty disturbing. Remember that time I drank that guy? That was fucking weird. So I take it. The, the music is not us. You're the one who exterminated this entire city then. Oh, no, no, that was another guy. His name was Shit Sherlock. First name, no. Why? Just why? Well, three reasons. There's nothing more satisfying than the rush I get from watching a person disappear. They're, they're cutting scenes all around here, guys. But yeah, that, that, that's like who I play, guys. And this is... I talk about, like, I feel like I didn't get on their level. When I played Cell, in, Cell, in Perfect Cell, I'm like, I'm now on their level, finally. I'm just going like, Piccolo, please don't be that way. I love you. So here's the thing. The original intent, from what I'm understanding, is Toriyama intended that Imperfect Cell would become second form Cell, and that was his perfection. The Perfect Cell you saw was a uh, editor's choice. That's why I don't hate Perfect Cell, but it, like uh, you took inspiration from Scream. I actually am going to grab you a scene. Now, everybody, before we take off here, I'm going to say, like, I, when you play a character, because everything I play is based off of something, more or less, even Guru, technically. Same Ray 06. Thank you so much. So this next scene is, I based this, uh, I, one of the, th I, I have, like, a, especially for Imperfect Cell, I specifically had, I was pulling from a lot of stuff. Um, now some people say I pulled from, uh, Freddy Krueger. I actually, now any Freddy Krueger vibes you were getting were accidental. I was not pulling from Freddy Krueger. I was pulling from, uh, the original Imperfect Cell, because you gotta take from the original. I was pulling from, vocally, Zorak, actually. Uh, and this was a big one, guys. Zorak from multiple shows. I believe he was on the Brack show and Space Ghost. And he talked like this the whole time. Like, his whole voice nonstop was like this, more or less. So, I took... The Imperfect Cell, which is like here. Then I took the Zorak, which is the ha speed. I took some Beetlejuice as well. Ha 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 ha. I was wrong there. <laughs> but I had, so I had Zorak, the original Cell, our own writing. I needed one more thing to pull from. And this is where I'm going to reference this, guys. This is the last thing I pulled from for my Imperfect Cell. And I give you... A scene from The Wishmaster, a 1997 horror movie, and you are going to see where I got Cell's menace from. You notice how I'm very menacing as Imperfect Cell? Especially Imperfect Cell? This is exactly where I got his menace from. Like, he's menacing in the show. We're being funny. But this is where I got the evil. This is... Are you ready? Are you ready for the evil side of... Are you ready to see one-third of Cell? Here we go. Sit down. Sit down. Where's Wendy? Bedroom. But I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Messy. I needed her face. You killed her? Actually, I can't kill anyone. Not unless they wish me to. Your research should have told you that. She had wished to be dead, you lying sack of shit! I showed her my true face. Her reaction wasn't very flattering. As a matter of fact, she got downright hysterical. I merely asked her if she wished to be released from her fear. Oh, yeah. You're a dangerous person to know, Alexandra. Your scientist friend, your boss, the policeman, Wendy. By the by, where is that tasty little sister of yours today? Oh. <gasps> If you harm Shannon, I'll kill you. Spare me, child. Behold my true face. Oh, my God. Yes. The shit just hit the fan, didn't it? Let's get this over with, shall we? Oh, yeah. Make your wishes. Oh, yeah, chat. You seeing it? Three wishes, Alexandra. Doesn't that intrigue you? Mm -hmm. Just a little... 
Anything you want. Anything? You ask for anything. I must grant it. A trip to the moon. A visit to Pharaoh's Egypt. Uh, what happened if I wished you dead? Why, how remarkably original, Alexandra. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll give you one free wish. A sample. Get you into the spirit, the spirit of, of the game. game. I want you to destroy yourself. Blow your brains out. Right now. Very well. Alright, I guess this is the night bitches yet. die. Oh! Okay, you almost ruined it. Almost threw it off, but thank you, Alex Mo Alexia Moe Vox. That which is eternal cannot die. But if it's any consolation, sweet Alex, that hurt like hell. Now, make your three wishes. And that's where I got him perfect cell from, guys. One of one of my like that. Oh yeah. So, uh, oh I know you know that line, chat. Oh yeah, he said the line. Oh yeah, because um, when we were getting to the sign, oh you took that line. Oh yes, dude. He's one of the three inspirations for Cell. I had to get that one line in there. Ah, an ultimately fruitless effort. But if it's any consolation, that hurt like yeah. <laughs> Like he's excels in actual pain because having your tail ripped off does hurt. <laughs> like, cause he, he's immortal essentially, but it still hurts like crazy, which is why 16's hardest line ever. Like, wait, hold on, I see a light. Walk towards it. <laughs> Good shit. So that's as, as you can tell, guys. I took that energy and put it into like imperfect zell with the zorak voice you know like because he can't just be the wish master but the wish master is insanely powerful like he is i mean he's a jinn by the way he's like a 1000 year old jinn essentially so he's been around for so long like it's all a game to him and that is kind of what it is to sell as well the tail is part of your spine so it would hurt a lot oh yeah exactly which is why what happened to sell actually hurt if he didn't have piccolo cells he actually would be disarmed entirely and this is why he's virtually immortal until the really angry preteen shows up and gets gangster on his ass mouth. It's true. It's kind of what happens, guys. So you, all I can say, guys, is remember that, like, pretty much for Imperfect Cell, I took the original Imperfect Cell, took Wishmaster and Zorak and a little bit of Beetlejuice and combined them together. And that's what I, and that's why Imperfect Cell is essentially a slasher character. So, yeah, I can talk about that a little bit here, guys. We've been going for three hours and 15 minutes. I got to find somebody to raid right now. And thank you all so much for all the love and the raids you've been raining on down here, as well as that last gift sub as well guys you'd be all really kind guys now i gotta find somebody to go raid right into here uh we're gonna be doing this again i actually have some big news guys i have realized that people like it when i watch things i've realized that recently that people have enjoyed me watching things so what i have decided is to watch things a little bit more often and all I'm going to say, folks, is the next big watch thing I'm going to be doing might be with Vexoria the Sun Eater, and it might be if the Emperor had text to speak. Oh, and by the way, for those who don't know, I play three characters in that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the way, guys, in Emperor Has Text to Speak, I play Abaddon the Despoiler, the Glorious Custodes Dreadnought Santodes, and Caiaphas Cain. Yeah, take that, and take that to the bank with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, some people don't even know that shit. I love blowing minds. It's so fun, guys. All right. Let us raid. Let us raid into Bow Sheep. Let us raid into Bow Sheep. Da -da -da -da. Thank you all, guys, for all the love. Now I'm going to raid you into Bow Sheep, and you be kind to Bow Sheep. Talk to you later. Bye. That hurt like hell. <laughs> That's why the whole, you know when that guy was pursuing her, he's like, uh, showed her face. She got downright hysterical. And that's literally that, that growl he does is in perfect cell. It's the best way of describing it. <laughs> he's having fun. He's an animal who's intelligent, and that's why he's a great character. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye!